Russia says it has found some common ground with Russia in the Ukraine crises. National Security Correspondent Sagar Magani has more. Secretary of State John Kerry says the two sides agree there needs to be a diplomatic solution, with Russia proposing the possibility of a federated Ukrainian state. Kerry says Ukraine has to make the call. No decisions about Ukraine without Ukraine. And as they met in Paris, Kerry says he told his Russian counterpart the troop buildup along its border with Ukraine is not helping. Creating a climate of fear and intimidation. Even though he acknowledges the troops are still on Russian soil. Sagar Megani, Washington. A new report says we're all at risk from global warming. Correspondent Carlotta Bradley tells us why. Killer heat waves in Europe, wildfires in the U.S., droughts in Australia, and deadly flooding in Africa and Asia. A new report by a United Nations scientific panel on climate change says disasters such as those highlight how vulnerable humanity is to extreme weather. The authors say those and other dangers are going to get worse as the climate changes even more. The report emphasizes the varied risks the world faces and how no one on the planet is immune from the dangers to come. One of the authors, Princeton University professor Michael Oppenheimer, says we're all sitting ducks. I'm Carlotta Bradley. In health news, today is the last day for many people looking to sign up with the Affordable Care Act. Correspondent Tony Winton talked to some folks who waited until late last week to make the move. As the deadline neared, people filed into this suburban union hall. Some, like Monica Bistrain, had given up when they encountered website glitches months ago. I had some problems uh, with the website. But last week, it was a different story. They sent me an email, and I just came. I, it was great. There was no way. It was a great experience. Others, like Wilmer Macias, simply couldn't use a computer. My mother, she doesn't speak English, and she's really slow in computer. Florida's enrollments in the new law exceeded expectations, even though the state's Republican leaders fought it and declined to expand Medicaid. Tony Winton, Doral, Florida. A simple test appears very good at ruling out heart attacks in people who go to emergency rooms with chest pain. Correspondent Shelley Adler has more on the study that was discussed at an American College of Cardiology conference in Washington over the weekend. A large study in Sweden found the blood tests plus an EKG were 99% accurate at showing which patients could safely be sent home rather than be admitted for more tests. Chest pain sends about 15 million people to emergency rooms in the U.S. and Europe each year. It usually is from anxiety, indigestion, or less serious things than a heart attack. Knowing who can safely go home saves money and avoids harm from unnecessary tests and hospital-acquired infections. Shelley Adler, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. From Betty Davis's first role as a piece of chocolate cake in the 1931 film Palmy Days to the discovery of Niagara Falls in 1996, The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On May 16, 1929, the first Academy Awards were handed out in categories such as Greatest Achievement in Blackface, Best Catholic Whipping Scene, and Most Gorgeous Gams on Abroad. The highlight of the night occurred when Wings won the award for Best Picture without a single Dago, Tar Baby, or Wetback. And on May 15, 1940, the first McDonald's opened in San Bernardino, California, back when a young Grimace was just working as a cashier. And that was what happened this week in history. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, history is actually pretty racist. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything toll-free here. 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you on our site. The We Tonight includes me, Ian. Allie. And Mark. Allie's here courtesy of her radio show, ALP, which I didn't get to catch any of this past weekend, Allie. Unfortunately, what was your your subject? 
Uh, we talked about cynicism on the last show. It was Ellen's topic, and Ellen actually hosted the show. Oh, excellent. It's a lot of fun when we get to switch it up. So I think that's how we're going to do it now. Switching off. My topic, my show, her topic, her show. Okay, very cool. ALPshow.com. You can go check out more of Allie there, and we may actually be getting Ellen to come in on a few Fridays. Oh my gosh, that's going to be exciting. You guys are going to love Ellen. Looking forward to that. So other stuff in the news, of course, you can call in and bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. Uh, apparently, there's been there's a headline over a Drudge report saying there's been shots fired between North and South Korea. So not really oh sure. No. What's, yeah, not really sure what's going on there. I haven't taken the time to look into that. But there was uh, there's news about Bitcoin. Uh, Mark, you actually just finished interviewing one of the proprietors behind the uh, one Coin of the Bitcoin Vault. ATMs. Yeah, Coin Vault ATM. His name's uh, Sheldon, Sheldon Weisfeld. That's going to be appearing on your Edgington Post. That's correct. Interview series, which momentarily. Uh, was, Listeners who would like to subscribe to that can do so at freetalklive.com. Just look over in the left-hand side of the page. You'll see several links. One of them is to our regular podcast, which your Edgington Post does appear in our full podcast. You get the episodes of Free Talk Live. You get Edgington Post. You get whatever other stuff you know we decide to put up there, maybe interviews that we might have been a part of, etc. That cetera. sounds like an exciting interview because all kinds of questions are coming to my mind just now thinking about Bitcoin ATMs, but I guess I'll have to listen to the interview to find the answers. Yep, they've got he's got the answers, and there are some questions involved. So, of course, Bitcoin down. Price has been down over the last few days in comparison to say last week. Uh, maybe a good time for for folks to buy. It. What was it at like five hundred something today? I saw it down as low as like four fifty. Four fifty. Wow. Okay. So uh, maybe a good time to buy, especially knowing that other companies are getting on board. Uh, Stripe now. For those that don't know Stripe, or if you've been listening to the show for a little you while, don't you don't know Stripe. You may know Stripe without realizing it. We've talked about Squarespace, one of our advertisers, where you can get great web hosting and really well designed, uh, pretty graphically pleasing websites, and get them at a discount with code FTL. I believe three at the moment. Believe FTL four. Either one will work. Uh, usually, it changes based on the month that we're in. But uh, we've talked about the the the, uh, the e-commerce platform that Squarespace is using, and Stripe is part of that. So I think this is going to be pretty good news for anybody who's signed up for a Squarespace website. In that Stripe has announced that their merchants will soon be able to accept Bitcoin payments. Yay. According to Recode.net, online payments company Stripe will soon allow its customers who use its payment tools to accept credit card purchases online to accept Bitcoin payments as well, said its CEO Wednesday evening. Stripe believes it's the first major online payments platform to support purchases made in Bitcoin. Up to now, Stripe merchants that wanted to accept Bitcoin as payment would have to integrate with Bitcoin-specific processors such as Coinbase or BitPay. And I saw another headline today, uh, kind of an update on the story, that said that apparently they have teamed up with Coinbase. So Stripe is working with Coinbase to integrate Bitcoin acceptance into their system. Now, we haven't talked to Squarespace about this yet, but I'm going to guess that if Stripe is taking Bitcoin, then that would mean that if you've got a Squarespace e-commerce site, that that will soon, not sure when, but at some point become an option for you. Well, that's as well. really cool because um, you know Squarespace has really attractive websites, and some people think, well, I can get, an, I could probably get an attractive website for free, or just use one of the free themes on a free site, but. If you can, it is does look better when you have something that's already basically put together and you just put in your own content. It always looks better that way. I think so. I'm and not a graphic designer. It's easy to add like a uh, Bitcoin donation thing because Bitcoin's just so easy. All you need is the address right. to donate. So you could have a self-sustaining website if you can uh, pay for your website in Bitcoin and your users can help pay for the site with Bitcoin donations, then it would not be like this hurdle or like this big commitment to pay for a site. And to me, this is what's important is adoption. Companies are accepting Bitcoin. People are using Bitcoin to uh, to purchase things. It's interesting you, Overstock began accepting Bitcoins. And they had this mm -hmm. huge day. Uh, Tiger Direct accepts Bitcoins. They have this huge amount of sales over the first week. Well, right. It wasn't just a day for Overstock. No, I mean, it they brought just, in new customers. It did. Yeah. Absolutely all these things are true. And so a lot of people are getting skittish on Bitcoin. They're like, ah, ha, 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 I don't know what's going on. It's gone. <laughs> from 620 to 450. Okay, hey, hey. 
I've been here before, and I understand where you're ta- what, where you're at. I've been through the spike of Bitcoin when it ran all the way up to thirty dollars, mm-hmm. and the spike where it ran up all the way to two hundred and fifty dollars. Yep, and the spike where it ran up all the way to eleven fifty. You know, I understand what that's like. I just. You know, what you've got to understand is it's about adoption. If Bitcoin gets adopted by a certain amount of people on the Internet, then it's going to have a certain amount of value. If you if Bitcoin just accounted for the sales of Amazon, just Amazon's amount of sales. You know, there's a lot of businesses on the Internet besides Amazon. Mm-hmm. But just Amazon's amount of sales, they'd be worth $12,000 a piece. So I'm not worried about Bitcoin's price. I'm worried about Bitcoin's adoption. Well, I think that the... Um varying degrees of the prices the price of bitcoin going up and down all the time makes it more fun to use and that i'm more willing to experiment with it it doesn't have this like well i know in three months it's going to be up from what it is now so i'm tempted to hoard it like i'm not sure if i want to hoard it or if i want to spend it so i do a little of both you know i'm not i think that's a wise uh, decision i feel willing to donate bitcoins like if a if you know a program i want to donate to has the option to donate bitcoins I feel like that's an easy choice to make because it's not just easy, but I'm not feeling like I'm losing money on the deal or anything because I don't know what's going to happen to the price. Sure, and it's not taking anything out of your bank account anyway. Exactly. So uh, our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. But the folks over at Salon.com are saying libertarians have lost the so-called battle for Bitcoin soul. So never mind all this good news about Bitcoin and you know Stripe's going to accept Bitcoin now, which means that probably, I don't know, thousands if not hundreds of thousands of websites will be able to accept Bitcoin easily just by virtue of the fact that they already use Stripe for their payment processor. Sure, there's all this great news about Bitcoin being accepted by major corporations and companies and it's being adopted worldwide by individuals and etc. But you libertarians, you've lost the battle for Bitcoin's soul. The story oh, how terrible. is from Aaron Sankin at The Daily Dot, and I guess Salon syndicated the piece. Okay. If there was one message that people professionally in the Bitcoin business wanted to get across during the South by Southwest interactive conference held earlier this month, it is this. Bitcoin is not a currency, and anyone who thinks of it as such is missing out on its true potential. Bitcoin, they argued, is primarily a payments mechanism, a way to transfer value from point A to point B in a way that's simple, verifiable, and most importantly, cheap. Is it? How is that different than currency? Well, yeah, um, like currency to me. It, it's the the suggestion. So uh, the fact is, PayPal is a payments vehicle. Mm-hmm. You don't have money when you have value with PayPal. You have. Dots. You have you have a recording in their ca- accounting thing. Um, That's true. So what they're claiming here is is that uh, Bitcoin is really for that. I disagree. Um, if you Bitcoin is a currency, if you do not translate its value back to U.S. dollars, if you just continue to use Bitcoins as a uh, as a unit itself, then even if you th- are thinking in dollars, if you're still using bitcoins to transfer wealth from one location to the next, it qualifies as a currency, in my, t- to my mind. Totally. I mean, anything that can make uh, the transfer of value between human beings easy but is essentially a currency. If it makes technocrats, government bureaucrats, um, you know, business people or uh, socialist writers feel better to say that it's a payments mechanism instead of a currency— <laughs> I'm fine with that. I don't really care. I don't believe for a second that libertarians have lost the fight for Bitcoin's soul. Bitcoin doesn't have a soul, and it doesn't care about libertarians. <laughs> That's a dumb thing to say. All right, so we'll come back with more. We'll get more of his argument here in a few moments. And your calls and thoughts certainly welcome. You can bring up anything that you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Take control here also via Skype. You can connect to username lrn.fm or Free Talk Live coming up. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, 
and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw for free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T dot com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Uh, we got a mobile site. You can go to amazonmobile.freetalklive.com. I did update the mobile site, as I promised last week, with a link to our webcam, because now if, you have, uh, have, if you've had difficulty viewing the webcam via your mobile device in the past, you should no longer be having that difficulty because I paid for the AAC license, and now it works. Uh, it was 180 bucks, and now you can watch our mobile stream. So I'm that's all you have to pay for a license, don't you? That's all it took. No, I don't like to pay for a license <laughs> at all. I'm watching it right now. Did it not work previously? Yes, it didn't work previously. Excellent. Now it does. Success. So you go to m.freetalklive.com. There's a link there now to our webcam. You cannot access the webcam through the live stream app. We stream through live stream. They have this weird system uh, where there's new live stream and there's old live stream. And since our stream is part of old live stream, 
And because we're not using their software to stream, we can't be seen through their app. So don't even bother trying with a live stream app. Just go to cam.freetalklive.com or go to m.freetalklive.com and then you'll be able to watch through our website. So that's the way you have to watch the webcam if you're going to do it on a mobile device is through cam.freetalklive.com. You can go get a free pound of what I think that will be some of the best coffee you've ever tried at coffee.freetalklive.com. Now, Buzzbox Coffee, whom we work with, isn't just a high-end coffee producer that has 100% organic coffee that is top 1% grade Arabica coffee and is shade grown. It's not just that. It's also a mindset. They work with the producers of the coffee to work with the environment. They provide micro loans to people in the communities with these producers so they can grow you know, their coffee co-op larger. Um, they allow folks like us to help to put in micro loans, uh, to create micro loans for other people in other uh, third world communities. They have a very social mindset and it makes it easy to do business with them because you're getting great coffee, but you're not, you, you know, the, the, the price is commensurate with other high end coffees, but I don't do it to spoil myself. I do it to help other people, to give them a hand up to have a better life. And you can do that too. Just go to coffee.freetalklive.com try the free pound there you'll have to sign up for a subscription they give you they send you coffee on a regular basis you can uh, you know uh, you can choose what the time frames are customize the time frames get the right the, the right brand for you i drink decaf the options for the free pounds don't include decaf i'm sorry def, decaf great drinkers but we are in such a remarkably low minority. Folks just don't pay attention to us. So uh, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get your free pound of caffeinated coffee. If you're a decaf drinker, take the free pound. Give it to somebody you know. They'll love it. And get on the, uh, the, 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 the subscription, and you'll get some great coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. Salon.com arguing that libertarians have lost the battle for Bitcoin's soul. And Mark, you rightfully pointed out that Bitcoin doesn't have a soul. It's a currency and yes. a fin financial transaction network. It does not have opinions or preferences or any kind of uh, human entity. But I do think that certain opinions and preferences did guide it to be. I mean, when you're trying to sell something to someone, like you know, for instance, coffee, then you gotta have some purpose behind it, other than just it tastes good, and it's. Um, you know, other than just saying, hey, this is just another alternative currency you can use, that doesn't necessarily make people want to switch over That's true. some of their resources into Bitcoin unless you explain explain other reasons why they might want to use it. Like, it's decentralized and the government can't tax it. Well, um, the government's certainly trying to tax Bitcoin. The IRS yeah. just came out with certain regulations uh, that are demanding people could treat it as what's called property which is a legal term as far as the IRS is concerned. Right, you're supposed cetera, to pay the same taxes on it like you would pay on anything else. On any property transactions or something like that, as, as I understand it, which I don't have any understanding of the IRS's rules. Uh, but that's just from reading the, the news articles about it. So they're trying. But yeah, you're right. Generally, Bitcoin is off the books. It's something that's completely separate from the, the track. I mean, even though it is completely trackable, it's also something you can use anonymously. <laughs> right. As long as you don't tell somebody. If you generate a Bitcoin address, no one knows that you've generated that Bitcoin address unless you tell somebody, this is my Bitcoin address. So like, if you go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com, there's an address there. That's very much obviously associated with Free Talk Live. However, once the Bitcoins leave the Free Talk Live address and go to a different uh, address, you don't know whose address that is. It could be mine. It could be Mark's. It could be somebody else entirely. So uh, Bitcoin really has a level of protection as far as privacy is concerned. So yeah, some of these are really good points. And the, there could be an argument made that the founder or the, the creator of Bitcoin may actually have an interest in kind of taking down the old system and defeating the state currencies. I don't know if he's made statements to that end. I, you know, I, I have not done the research on Satoshi Nakamoto, the anonymous, allegedly anonymous individual, as far as maybe it's more than one person. We don't know. It's it was a, certainly a group that uh, developed it. And you to, think so? Well, yes. And it's Satoshi, a group that's developing it now. You're saying, but originally? it was a group. Okay. Yes, I believe that's uh, that. As, as from what we can tell, that's um, that's the case. I mean, from hmm. what I've heard. But the fact is, is that. Um, 
it, it what Satoshi brought out was further developed by a group of people even who aren't anonymous. That's so, correct. So you know, Satoshi's talked about as this uh, the developer of Bitcoin, and I suppose this um, you know this group, the person or group, gets credit for it, but. Bitcoin was developed, you know, all kinds of things were added on after it was trotted out. Yeah. People like to imagine that when these new technologies come out, that there was this person who came from out of the woodwork who's been devoting his life to this, you know, new concept. He hasn't told anyone else about it. And then here you go. Here it is. It's a new idea. It's going to take over the world. But a lot of times these things are developed between different groups, maybe who don't even know about each other. It's just like this idea has seen its day and you know it's just whoever's idea wins out that's when we say oh they created this concept it's like the concept existed before they were just had the most success with it yeah you know i realize we've gone off uh kind of from the original track we'll get back to salon's accusations here in a moment about libertarians but uh so you're saying that people believe we you use the term we okay uh, believe that there is a group behind Bitcoin. That's interesting. I, 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 read, I, I always heard it was a possibility, but I never heard any advocation for, you know, what's the evidence for that, etc. I read, um, you know, they, somebody speculated that this is how this started. Um, they believe they had, you know, some internet pseudonym that was besides Satoshi that was recruiting people to do this um, prior to the release, and they, they put some things together. So I think that it's likely that's the case. I guess I probably shouldn't have said, use the term certainly, but what I was trying to allude to is there was certainly a group after it was trotted out that worked on it and that group is Afterwards, out yeah. in the open and it's obvious and so this this whole thing about satoshi is nonsense it's it's people chasing after the great man again mm. he's not jesus it was flawed <laughs> when it came out and people fixed it mm. they, they they made it better it was a group of people and they're not you know they're not they didn't do it in secret it didn't get it didn't get laid out like a golden egg um you know on the first day yeah, the only thing that makes me think it wasn't a group who developed it originally was that they've been very, very quiet. And, you know, like if you're doing a marijuana grow operation, as soon as you tell two people, you've, you're busted <laughs> by the cops. So, you know, the more people you would have involved in that group, the more likely you're going to have a weak link and somebody's going to slip up and tell somebody at a party or in a bed uh, that they're actually the creator of Bitcoin. More coming up here in moments. You can take control. This is Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before or two, refuse to be a victim. And for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick ins, we do. Doordevil.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm me. comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. 
Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You know how annoying it is when someone keeps stopping mid-sentence as though he or she were asking you a series of questions? Avoid doing that. It sounds unnervingly tentative, and it imposes upon the listener to help you complete the thought. And if you're a job seeker, this alone could be a deal killer. An effective communicator sounds more confident. Complete the thought. Avoid making the listener impatient. With money and attention so scarce now, Effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter, rather than blending into the blah, 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 will help you connect better, no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Survivalspeech.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves. Dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. Has the soul of Bitcoin been lost by the libertarians? That is the claim of Salon.com. We barely scratched the surface on their piece. We'll get back into that when we get a chance. Your calls are welcome. You can also join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Just send a request, contact request. It will be accepted. Then it'll be easy for you to get on Skype from that point on. Also, we've got a bulletin board system where you can get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners. bbs.freetalklive.com will take you there. We've been following the process or the uh, the court system as they have gobbled up Ross Ulbricht uh, into their system. The FBI arrested him back in 2010, or excuse me, 2010, in October, which is the 10th month of 2013. Okay. <laughs> he was arrested in October last year and charged with various non-crimes uh, in relation to running, allegedly, the Silk Road Underground Black Marketplace, which is something that really kind of helped put Bitcoin on the map in a way. There was a lot of uh, news articles written about the Silk Road before any real stories about Bitcoin hit right. in any kind of meaningful Silk way. Silk Road was the story. Bitcoin was just sort of an accessory to the story. Exactly. And Silk Road is an underground black market. It still exists today in its uh, second form. There's a new version, Silk Road 2.0, uh, Ross Ulbricht. Was but Silk Road was really sort of bulletproof up until the point that it was no longer bulletproof. Mm. And... Well. The other sites have all sort of, you know, there there have been so many of these kind of takedowns and upsets. There have been a few imitators who uh, have been either scams or have just been just nailed hard by hackers. I think a lot of people just don't just don't trust it the way they used to trust the uh, Silk Road because there hadn't been anything that had happened up to Silk Road at that point. So, uh, and we'll continue to follow the Silk Road saga as that develops. We had the opportunity at the Austin, Texas Bitcoin conference that we attended, Mark and myself and Stephanie and Brian, to actually meet Ross Ulbricht's mother. She was there and was just absolutely pleasant, nice lady, and of course it's horrible what's happening to her son. As uh, as had been pointed out, he, in my opinion, is a hero if he's Dread Pirate Roberts. If he's not, then he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, he never hurt anybody. The original claims that were being made about him by the FBI that he had hired hitmen 
to go after his uh, his enemies, that kind of thing, and online people that he had. You'd some think sort they'd of beef charge with. him with that, wouldn't you? They didn't charge him with that. According to his mother, when the the final indictment actually came through, they finally went to the arraignment. The charges were finally officially read. I mean, he's been in in jail for six months, and just now, within the last couple months, have they finally brought the charges forth? Uh, and it didn't include that one. I mean, because that no. was the one that. You know, when I was reading about the story, I was like, well, I kind of want to get the, behind this guy, but this stuff. But he's about, a murderer. Yeah. That's the, and, and that's really the point here is, is that, you know, maybe the FBI tossed in a little something extra just to get it so that people didn't support this guy. They didn't want that's a movement right. behind him. Just to because poison I his felt the same image. way, Allie. I really was like, you know, I really like this guy, but I can't do this murder for hire stuff. I didn't believe it. When, I don't know if you recall that, but I didn't believe that. It I, seemed I to believe me to be your, as, I, you know, I, with, I believe that. Like with um, Julian Assange, they had that whole rape case. Is sort of like that just that, seems exactly. so obviously like a distraction. Yeah, but, but the rape case was so flimsy. I mean, but it, it doesn't was, matter. They still got to make the claims the term, in the in the, the press that this guy's a rapist. There's not a term for what he was charged with in the United States. Because he's not, it's not rape. I mean, what he was charged with essentially was um, having sex under the false pretenses. Like, oh, I'd like to be your boyfriend. Yeah. No, I've changed my mind. That's what we're talking about here. And a lot that's of raping what the guy, going on It everywhere. didn't stop the media from reporting it as a rape charge. It doesn't though. stop him from being essentially incarcerated yeah. in London for the last two or three years. So, Ross Ulbricht... N- has not been indicted on those murder charges or those alleged mur- murder for hire charges. He's only facing, I think there's like a you know conspiracy to commit money laundering, conspiracy for d- drug distribution, and I think a conspiracy for computer hacking or something like that. So only Silk Road related charges at this point, but that still is going to put him in prison for the rest of his life, likely, uh, if he gets found uh, guilty, or at least the, the majority of his uh, his adult life. And so his parents would really appreciate your help with their fundraising. They are not rich people, and they need assistance. So freeross.org is where you can go to contribute. They have PayPal. They, of course, have Bitcoin uh, donation options. So, again, freeross.org. Of course, there's a check. You can actually cut them a check. There's a mailing address there to his family in Austin, Texas that you can send a, a check to. So they will take... Whatever you can give in whatever way you can give it, and uh, they will really appreciate it. Of course, we'll keep you up to date as we learn more about Ross and his case. So go check out freeross.org. Let's go to AC in Ohio. AC, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Allie, and Mark. Yeah. Um, last week, I called in to uh, respond to a regular call you guys have had a wit who's been saying a lot of very disturbing things, particularly the new king of Japan. And, you know, you have to say evil to empire. If, if you don't say evil empire, it doesn't really drive it home. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, he, he called in the day after, to, and he did some response to some of the things I said. He uh, falsely accused me of saying that I made up the fact that he said that he is bashing of Muslims. Um, when I actually went back and re-listened to the call I was responding to, and, basically, and both on that episode and the one where he called after me, he basically talked about how he basically said... Um, you know, the Quran is full of hate and the Bible isn't, which is a clear indication of bashing of Muslims. So, well, you, you know, yeah, and he, very... you lied because he doesn't consider what he said to be bashing. Um, Wit right. went, went from his original call, which was uh, the evil empire, of, it was explaining to Ian why violence is necessary to create peace, which I find to be, you know, an interesting conversation. I'm willing to have that to the very next call um, where he was talking about, you said this about me. And you said that about me. And every time he calls in, it's always about wit. Mm -hmm. Wit is a pretty classic narcissist. And he's not even a very interesting one. Yeah. um, So one of the things I wanted to do is respond to a couple of his sort of religious arguments. Um, He sat there and talked about how, you know, well, there's all these evil Muslims, the typical, there's all these evil Muslims in the Middle East. If I go there and tell them I don't believe Muhammad, they're going to kill me. I'm like... Well, you know, there sure are a lot of evil Christians out there, and, you know, the Bible, you know, when he said that the Bible doesn't promote hate, I immediately laughed. I'm like, there are tons of passages in the Bible that clearly promote hate, and there's all sorts of Christians in different parts of the world using those passages to to promote all sorts of hatred. I mean— Sure, look at all the hatred towards uh, towards, uh, gay people that many Christians have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like what what went on in Uganda where they tried to pass government law to put homosexuals to death, but they changed it to where they're just going to life imprison them. You've got— 
of Nigeria killing off people who even their own children who they claim are witches. And of course you've got the Lord's Resistance Army in Africa who go who go around killing people who don't believe what they believe. And not just like atheists and Muslims, but even Christians who don't believe what they believe. And they go around kidnapping uh, women and children to sell into slavery, which is something else the Bible supports. So well, I think you know, that's one of the other things about uh, this caller that you're referring to, Wit, uh, is that he likes to put people into groups and pretends as though they all believe the same way. I mean, there are Christians who are very devoted, peace-oriented uh, Christians who are really trying to live their life as they believe Christ would have lived it, forgiving their uh, their enemies and, and loving their enemies and things like that. And then there are the— Those are the ones I can get along with. Right. Then there are the Pharisee Christians who absolutely don't care about any of that stuff. It's all about they, the law for them. They support war and the state and things like that. And, uh, and there are people, as you pointed out, who will go even further and actually advocate for and or commit violence— so all the while claiming to be on the side of God. And those people exist on the Muslim side as well. There are obviously extreme people who believe in, in violence as a solution, who call themselves Muslims. And there are also peaceful Muslims. The majority of them are peaceful people because if, there weren't, if they weren't peaceful people, there would be a hell of a lot more violence in the world and there would be a hell of a lot more you know, suicide bombings and things like that. And, and that's not the case. It just doesn't happen. So any th- other thoughts you want to share tonight, AC? Actually, you know what? Wit's actually on the line. You want to talk to him? Yeah, I will. I'll put you on here with uh, Wit here. Actually, in just a few moments, we're going to actually ask you both to hold. Uh, we'll want to make sure you have a chance to talk. Uh, now, did, were there allegations that Wit called in under a different name last uh, that, night? That was the allegation. I didn't necessarily think that was the, the case, but mm-hmm. um, that was what uh, Stephanie and, and some other people on the Facebook page posited. Toll-free number uh, here in moments, or you can call in and, and join in, 855-450-FREE. We will bring Wit on with AC and allow uh, Wit to respond. 855-450-FREE. It's good to know Wit actually listens in the first hour of the show, because normally he calls, calls at the very the end of the segment, show. Yeah. Uh, more on the way. This is Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. You gotta see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional, quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Free Talk Live. Most people think you have to seek out a God for finding meaning in life, but really meaning comes from your awareness yeah. that your next move will have a consequence to you, whether it's good or bad. The meaning is created by the, the person having the experience. It's inside the experience, you. Sir. Your awareness that your next move will have a consequence for your positive or negative view of the world. Mm. And that's I, where all meaning comes from. And I fully believe that it's your interpretation of your experiences, how you decide to act as a result of the circumstances that surround you, that uh, will ultimately decide your fate here. As far as you know, will you have a pleaven experience or will it be right. a hellacious one? I believe that I believe heaven in heaven and, and earth, hell, but I believe that they exist right every now. moment. Like you right get now. to choose heaven and hell, yeah. and the people that do bad things experience hell because doing bad things results in bad stuff. But you can always choose otherwise. You can begin. 
begin at any sure. moment to sure. start over Sinners again. Sinners can be redeemed. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here and bring up what you want. Number is 855-450-FREE. More about Salon's claims that Bitcoin has been lost by the Libertarians. Its soul, the battle for its soul, has been lost by the Libertarians. We'll uh, tell you more about that. You can join in here toll-free, but bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. Also, Skype in at username lrn.fm. Of course, you can join us online. If you like Free Talk Live and you appreciate what we're doing here on the air, you like the idea that we're spreading the ideas of uh, freedom and Bitcoin and all kinds of other fun stuff here seven nights a week, then you can help us by shopping with Free Talk Live. You go to shop.freetalklive.com and you'll find links to Amazon there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just click into the right one for you and Free Talk Live We'll get a portion of your purchase price. It's the same great prices, same great selection, shipping deals, everything you're used to from Amazon. You're just entering through our affiliate links so Amazon knows we sent them the business, meaning they cut us a portion of their profits. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. AC had called in tonight and is still on the line with us in Ohio. You were calling to respond to Wit, who uh, you know, recently has become kind of a chronic caller of uh, Free Talk Live. Yeah. He's, he's on on a nightly basis, it seems like now. I usually, think that's an exaggeration. Usually calls toward the end of the show and uh, advocates, while claiming on one hand to be a libertarian, also advocates for war around the world, specifically supporting the horrific bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and also spreading hatred toward Muslims. So if he's a libertarian, I want nothing to do with the kind of libertarians like him. Sounds pretty mainstream to me. But AC, you had some thoughts for Wit and and yeah, ask and you shall receive. Wit has been summoned. He is uh, he is on the lines. He's called in of his own. Respond to all here. those lies you just said about me, Ian. May I? <laughs> well, but go it, ahead, Wit, real briefly. But then I wanted you to be able to yeah, talk to AC. Wait a second. Wait a second. I would like to talk to AC, but you just spouted off a bunch of lies about me. And by the way, I didn't support the bombing of Hiroshima or Nagasaki because I wasn't alive in 1945. I do defend you. You support it after the fact, though, Whit. I didn't support the same thing to the bombing of Nagasaki, if you want to put it that way. Do you defend but it? I, again, should like to suggest that the AC I really don't want to get back into that. Go ahead and correct the alleged lies, Whit. Next. Yeah. It's not a lie. You're no, lying. no, you said I lied about you. Lying so about go ahead and correct the alleged lies. By the way, I never, ever used. The Muslim word. You keep on saying. No, but you said Quran. You bashed the Quran, though. But you I said the Quran is full of hate. The Quran, AC. I do not believe Allah is God and Muhammad is his message. That's fine. That's fine. I don't got a problem with that. I mean, I'm, I'm a Christian too, buddy. Hey, kid. How old are you? 18? 25. Oh, my God. Okay. By the way, making fun of the Quran as being like, for instance, what Christopher Hitchens calls it a gross plagiarism of the New Testament. I kind of agree with you. I've read a lot of the Quran, and a lot of it reads just like the New Testament. And I'm really cool with Muslims, by the way. Okay, well, that's good. Welcome to a Roman Catholic church anytime he wants to, Ian. Anytime he wants to come into a Roman Catholic church, he's welcomed. And I say peace be upon him. But 
I do not believe the Koran is based on a true story. Now, if I lived in the Middle East and said that on public radio, I'd best have uh, the world's best security force because there are a lot of Islamists in the Middle East, AC, that don't believe Christians have a right to exist. And even worse, they would love to use a nuclear weapon in Iran if the Supreme Ayatollah had one. People okay. get death threats here in the United States when they say unpopular the things, Wit. said he'd like to wipe Israel off the map. And if he Whit. had a nuclear bomb, I think the Supreme Ayatollah would have already That's used not the it. Supreme Ayatollah. And That's again, a misquote. You were actually talking about Ahmadinejad, and Ahmadinejad— just going to put him on hold. This is one of the really fun things about Wit, is he gets on and he doesn't even take a breath, and you can't say <laughs> anything about what, he, what he's talking about. Um, what we're— I don't know about the Supreme Ayatollah saying that he was going to bomb Israel off the map. I'd have to see a quote for that. I'm certainly familiar with Ahmadinejad, who is the 13th most powerful person at the time in uh, in Iran. Uh, the president isn't that a particularly powerful of a position. Also, people get hate mail here in the United States. I'm not saying it's the same. It's not the same. But let's not make it seem like... Every country in the Middle East is all the same either. Each one of them has their own different sort of culture and the way you're going to get treated. Well, I want to make sure AC also has a chance, but Allie, go ahead. Well, I just I think it's silly to say there are people who believe that other groups don't have a right to exist, therefore war. Like, just because someone thinks that doesn't mean that therefore you should go to war with those with people in that country with everyone in that country there are people in the christian faith who have the belief that they need to go stop them before they come over here and they want to go and uh, kill people from the islamic if there's a bigot anywhere on on earth then we should just bomb the entire country that that bigot exists in like that doesn't make any sense ac yeah uh, okay finally i got the line um i'd like to start off by saying you know I'm a Quaker and a believer in follower the teachings and lifestyle of Yeshua, and I can tell you the things that Wit, you've been supporting, like the nuking of Japan and all the war in the Middle East, Yeshua would not support any of that stuff, just to start out on that. And also, I also feel that, uh, one quick thing about the uh, Japanese thing is, I've also come to the conclusion I think you might have something against Japanese people, because you keep calling them Japs, which is a derogatory term to them. You do know that, right? Yeah, I've noticed that as well. I'm going to bring Wit back on to respond to you. Go ahead, Wit. Japs is what Americans used to call their enemy. That, by the way, AC murdered more, so more, many millions of people than the two bombs of, of Little Boy in Nagasaki. Times a factor of a hundred, kid. Who uh, are you please American stop, American stop, please stop grouping people together. Wait, I'm going to put you back on hold. P- please stop grouping people together. They, uh, Japanese people, did not murder anyone. There were individuals who were born on the plot of land known as Japan, who participated in war, but there were plenty of innocent people in Japan who had no hand whatsoever in committing any murder, just in the same way that there are people in the United States who are not members of the military who deserve no blame for the things that the people in the U.S. military do. So to just blame everybody in Japan for what the Japanese government or military involved in is a very unlibertarian thing to do, and as somebody who claims to be a libertarian, I would think that uh, that you would know better than that, Wit. AC, your thoughts for Wit? Yeah, um, well, the thing of it is, is that he talks about like one of the reasons why the nuking of those two cities was uh, was okay was because of the um, fact that there were people, there were factories uh, manufacturing their stuff, and like a lot of the people that worked in those factories were forced to work in there by the Japanese government. So, mm. you know, that doesn't really make killing them okay. Um, and also, um, with um, the United States government, I just want to give you a little quick uh, fact here. Um, the, the United States government cut off food sanctions to the Iraqi people, and that's caused all, almost, I'm sorry, the t- over half a million deaths of children under the age of six. This is because of the United States government. Do you think that's a justified act? It certainly sounds like an evil act to me, but I'll bring Wit back on here to respond. Go ahead, Wit. I notice how you never butt in on AC's rants because I guess they're nice, softly spoken. Well, we've never, uh, we don't have AC call every night, Wit, so. They're not, and I, and I don't keep on projecting stuff onto you, Ian, and I don't think Muslims are my, again. Do you have any thoughts about the uh, the any? killing of the 500,000? Uh, you're interrupting on me, but you don't interrupt on AC because you agree with him. AC and asked you a question, Wit. Are you here to respond or are you here to lecture us? Freely. Mark, Mark, lecture me. 
lecture you. You just made a bunch of lying allegations about me. Like I want you Gandhis to live in a sub- subject. I'm sorry, a, uh, uh, when I thought you were actually interested in me? conversing with you AC. Up to God and me or AC, and I still haven't got to respond to that allegation. Like I'm cool with what they do to homosexual people in Uganda because I'm Christian. No. And in fact, by the way, my old man was the most devout Roman Catholic you will ever meet. And yep, just like all his fellow uh, people that were alive in 1945 and didn't have to end up going over to face the evil empire of Japan. And it was an evil empire. I'm sorry. It was an evil empire. Is the United States an evil empire? So here's your here's your thesis up to this point. Wit. Here's the question. Here's your thesis up to this point. Your thesis is the United States thoroughly beat it. Why did you just butt in on me? Wait, you you run a symposium when you get on. If I didn't butt in, if I didn't butt in, Wit, you'd never stop. That's the point. I went to Wit's call with the purpose of giving him a chance to respond to AC, and he just wants to keep going off on his uh, with little piddly issues with how the show is run. Look, Wit, you call the show every single night. Of course we're going to give AC more of a chance to talk. Yeah. He's not the one who's trying to completely talk about all this hate, uh, this hate-filled anger that uh, that you happen to have towards Japanese people or whatever. AC, your final thoughts for Wit? Go ahead now. Yeah, well, first of all, he never responded to my question. No, and you won't get one. But, you know, yeah, but the thing of it is he just keeps calling evil empire Japan. I got news for you. The United States government is right now murdering more people than the the folks than the evil empire of Japan has ever done. And the fact that you call yourself a Christian and you support all this, yeah, no, you're not. Yeah, wit's an embarrassment to Christians. And thank you, AC, for your call. Appreciate your perspective tonight. And, uh, well, thanks. Bye, wit. 855-450-3. 855-450-3. Free. You can take control here in Hour 2 is next. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs... Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. Site, users will still be able to get to your site using your dot bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M E O W B I T.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, March 31st, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.93 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,293 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $454. AFP reports several thousand European separatists demonstrated in Brussels on Sunday for the right to self-determination. 
Under a forest of yellow flags emblazoned with black lions, Flemish separatists dominated the procession through the European Union's capital. The crowd, which marched under a banner proclaiming, Europe will vote for self-determination, numbering almost 3,000 people, according to a senior police officer. Draped in their regional colors, red and yellow, the Catalans chanted in their regional language for independence. Marta Geralt, a 38-year-old translator, came from Barcelona to defend the rights of Catalans to vote in a referendum on independence from Spain. Regional leader Artur Mas set the date for November this year, but Madrid has declared that vote illegal. Small groups of Scots who were due to vote in a referendum on independence from Britain in September also stood alongside South Tyrolians, Lombards, Corsicans, and a handful of Britons. The demonstration was organized by the International Commission on European Citizens, a body which represents the main separatist movements in Europe. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports NATO's Supreme Allied Commander for Europe, General Philip Breedlov, has cut short his visit to the United States yesterday, citing growing tensions in Eastern Europe and Russian troop movements near Ukraine. Breedlove, who is also the head of the U.S. European Command, was supposed to testify to Congress this week, but instead will be making the rounds in Europe, pushing the Obama administration's goal of more NATO troops in Eastern Europe. Estimates on the number of Russian troops on Ukraine's frontier vary wildly, mostly dependent on how much someone is trying to play up the idea of an imminent invasion. However, Pentagon figures have remained roughly stable at around 35,000 to 40,000. Putin has repeatedly promised everyone who has bothered to listen that he does not intend to invade eastern Ukraine and that the deployments are part of training exercises in the area. Even if such an incursion were to happen, it would be a huge leap to imagine it leading to a Russian invasion of NATO member nations in eastern Europe, which is what the deployments aim to preclude. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Go look at their shirts. They're witty, hip, smart, and liberty-oriented. Shop $6 Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. NBC News reports, according to dire warnings from U.S. military and intelligence officials, Russian President Vladimir Putin, fresh from his daring annexation of Crimea, has concentrated tens of thousands of forces on the border with Ukraine. Camouflaged and concealed to throw off U.S. spy satellites, the warnings say the heavily armed combat troops and special operations forces are coiled and ready to spring across the border into restive regions of eastern and southern Ukraine, where pro-Russian populations are eager to be annexed by Russia just like Crimea. Top Russian officials, including Putin himself, have denied any such troop concentrations near the western border. One minor Ministry of Defense official, who did not want to be named because he was not authorized to comment, told NBC News that there had been training exercises, war games in the border region, but once ended, those troops and armor returned to their bases. All of this international hype is completely unfounded, he said. A crew from NBC News took a journey along the 1,200-mile border between Russia and Ukraine, many segments of which gave no indication that it's an actual border between two countries and no signs of brewing war. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In this week's Onion Tips section, five easy ways to adapt your deplorable and parasitic existence for the upcoming Armageddon. Tip one, focus on preparing your home for any number of disaster situations, which still probably won't take your mind off of your impending death or the myriad mistakes you made in your short, pitiful life. Tip two, make sure your linens are clean prior to the upcoming catastrophe, as these are likely the very same sheets on which you will soon be slowly asphyxiated. Tip three, take some time off work and spend your last days free from the bonds of the oppressive machine 
machine that was just about the only thing giving you a purpose to your otherwise insignificant days. Tip four, spend your final waking minutes before the end of the world with your family, knowing full well you'd rather be doing a number of other gratifying yet completely depraved things. Right, sicko? In other news, a smitten foot fetishist thinks these may be the two. A woman and her gay best friend go on another one of their little adventures, and a dead daughter would have wanted a $220 million liability settlement. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want as we launch into the second hour of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Join us via Skype. If you have Skype, you can send us a contact request, and it will be accepted. All I have to do is send it to username lrn.fm, and we'll be able to easily connect with you on Skype from that point on in the future. And usually Skype sounds better, so if you have the choice, I would choose calling on Skype. Uh, so again, 855-450 free. Last hour, we just scratched the surface of a story from Salon.com. Actually, they're reprinting a site called The Daily Dot, DailyDot.com. In their opinion, uh, Aaron Sankin's opinion, that Bitcoin's soul, the battle has been lost by the libertarians. We will explain here further, or he will attempt to explain. And so first thing he says in the, the story is he starts out by claiming that he believes that Bitcoin is a payments mechanism. Or excuse me, this is what he's saying is this is what the argument was at South by Southwest. This may or may not be the author's opinion. Uh, so that, uh, that Bitcoin is a payments mechanism primarily. Yes, technically Bitcoin also functions as a cryptocurrency, but its evangelists in Austin, Texas seemed far less excited about the possibility of Bitcoin replacing the U.S. dollar or the Chinese yen than they were about taking down Visa, MasterCard, or Western Union. I'd love to see that happen too, mm -hmm. uh, because the fact is is that these uh, these companies are very disempowering for both clients uh, and r merchants. The attempt or this attempt to reframe the debate as neither rhetorical nor an attempt to quell the fears of government regulators. Instead, it's part of a larger attempt to shed many of the potentially negative ideological and criminal associations that initially accompanied Bitcoin in the mind of the public at large in favor of comparatively neutral instrument of commerce. That could be highly lucrative, especially considering that 76% of Americans have no idea what Bitcoin is. I think that's an old number. Um, the number he's quoting is, is there was a 25% number trotted out going on a year ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just feel like more people have heard about Bitcoin since then. Yeah, I hear about it on the news constantly. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I, I know that at least my brief experience doing flyering at the local college uh, found about 10% had heard of Bitcoin. And yeah. you'd think That's that so of weird. college students, uh, they would be maybe more aware of Bitcoin than the average person. But can maybe you buy not. beer with it? No. Not then yet. I don't see any evidence that there should... Uh... I bet you can at, <laughs> I bet you can buy beer with uh, Bitcoin at Porkfest. Yeah, I'm well, sure you can. The reason I'm saying I'm just surprised is because I don't mean I hear about in the news, like I search Google News. I hear it on, on the news, like on cable news outlets, talking mm -hmm. about Bitcoin, and like all the different all the different news channels are talking about the same uh, breaking story having to do with Bitcoin. And then that guy who they um, suspected was it Newsweek thought that it was Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah, that Satoshi was all, Nakamoto. Yeah, that was all <laughs> over the news. Yeah, you know, Ian, you were doing flyering at Keene State College. Yeah, not the uh, although, not MIT. Right, and this is what I'm saying. You know, if you, let's compare this to MIT, and I wonder what the numbers are going to be like. Let's go to RIT in Rochester, New York, and mm -hmm. let's uh, you know, let's start asking these questions. And I'm wondering because I mean, most people seem to be ma majoring in alcoholism at Keene State. <laughs> well, that's pretty common for a lot of colleges. I don't know. I don't live next to most colleges. Well, colleges, uh, college students are also notoriously uh, inactive and unconnected to the world that. A lot of people believe that college kids are connected to things, and I don't know if I if I agree with it. I think you're right that they are focused mostly on partying and certainly not paying attention to the world around them. But anyway, there is a link to his 76% of Americans quote yeah, here, so okay. I will dig into that when we get Please. a chance. We'll find out where, awesome. where that is coming from. Uh, but going on with his uh, story here, the process, he says, also has potential to discard the very ap aspects of the currency that so many of its early adopters found so attractive in the first place. 
Speaking at a SSXW panel, Bitcoin fanatic Jeremy Liu, managing director at the Silicon Valley venture capital firm Lightspeed Venture Partners, divided the history of Bitcoin into three distinct eras. Liu explained that the first wave of Bitcoin users were radical libertarians and cryptography enthusiasts who liked the idea that Bitcoin doesn't have a central authority with the ability to run printing presses whenever it wanted, thereby develop, uh, theoretically devaluing the funds sitting in their bank accounts. Uh, that's not a theory, by the way. It's true that when the government prints money, it devalues the money that you're holding if you're holding their money. Uh, so going on here, not a theory. Uh, the initial- Not necessarily. In the case um, of the, uh, the the recent the housing bubble and the the recession, banks held the money that the governments uh, printed. You know, mm-hmm. the, essentially the gov- government created. So. Keeping it out of circulation, therefore not really devalu- devalu- devaluing currency. Okay, I was presuming that they were printing the money into circulation. Into in circulation, that, In that yeah. discussion. The initial support got bitcoins to a total market cap of about 50 million U.S. The second wave of adopters who helped put bitcoin push Bitcoin over the 5 billion mark are people who largely appreciated Bitcoin for its pseudonymous nature. They could use Bitcoin to make online transactions without having to reveal their true identities, which made it an ideal vehicle for individuals engaged in illegal activities. The third wave, Liu uh, predicted, will be merchants sick and tired of giving Visa a 3% cut of every sale they make. Liu explained the market size of radical libertarians is pretty small. People who want to conduct illicit business is bigger, but it's still not enormous. The market size of everyone who could use it as a payment mechanism is virtually everyone who uses money. Speaking of another panel, or speaking at another panel in the festival, Fred Ursum, co-founder of the high-profile Bitcoin wallet service Coinbase, echoed Lou's sentiments. He says, right now, where Bitcoin adoption is kicking up now is with traditional tech early adopters, basically nerds, he said. Ursum pushed the idea that services like Coinbase could provide the infrastructure for making incredibly cheap transactions online. You know, what I'm stuck with here is, is the idea that what it sounds like these guys are trying to do is one of two things. They're trying to make Bitcoin legit, mm-hmm. um, or they're trying to be subversive and say, hey, this isn't a libertarian Trojan horse. Don't even look that way. I don't know what these guys' uh, uh, you know, motives are, but I, I, I want merchants to be empowered. So if this is the third wave, yes, That's great. I'm for that. What but libertarian wouldn't be for that? The claim that they've lost the fight for Bitcoin's heart and soul, um, for one, Bitcoin doesn't have a soul and doesn't have a heart. But the you know the fact is is that Bitcoin is honest money. The Federal Reserve note, the U.S. dollar, the petrodollar, whatever you want to call it, is dishonest money. The somebody who's not you can create more of them, therefore devaluing yours. Bitcoin, that can't be done. So it doesn't matter whether it's libertarian. It's not libertarian. It's honest. Right. It's When it comes to questions of currency, or especially questioning the Federal Reserve note and the Federal Reserve, I guess, uh, that's not just a libertarian issue. Um, I think sh- it shouldn't be. Yeah. I think that libertarians are maybe, I don't know, because I haven't been around for as long as you guys have, um, but that it seems like that bringing up that issue into light and talking about it started with libertarians but i've heard like conservatives and liberals talking um talking about the federal reserve and right, how you don't have dangerous to be a libertarian to care about the value of your money exactly it it's an issue that pertains to everybody who uses money which is everybody so i don't see why <laughs> we need to all fight over you know who who is bitcoin for because it's for anyone so the story at Salon goes on. He continues to kind of explain how it is that credit card fees work. He, for those that don't know, when you buy something with a credit card, there's a 3 to 5% fee typically. Unless you're talking about Walmart, they may be able to negotiate the some fee down to 2%. Some people don't get that. They go, yeah. to, they go to a store and they get charged extra for using their card and they don't understand what, what the deal is You're not there. supposed to be charged extra for using a card. That's usually a violation of the card uh, agreement with the with the company. But I've seen that or I've seen you. there's like a minimum payment like or yeah. a minimum yeah. amount of purchases. So every time you buy something with a credit card, there's a fee involved. And buying the same amount of uh, dollar of value item with Bitcoin would involve next to, you know, a, a close to zero fee. I mean, maybe a few cents, essentially, comparative to, like with PayPal, when uh, somebody sends a PayPal transaction to Free Talk Live, if you're ordering a Free Talk Live AMP program, if you're doing the $5 uh, per month AMP, we see $4.55 of that $5. And that's whether or not you're using a credit par- credit card, but the PayPal rates are about 
uh, tantamount to credit card rates, like 2.9%. Mm. It's kind of a standard rate for credit cards. And then there's usually a transaction fee as well. So it's 2.9% plus you know, 20 cents or 30 cents per transaction. 855 450 free. So he's saying that uh, you know merchants are going to be very excited about this. And, and he's absolutely right about that. How that means libertarians have lost Bitcoin, I, that I don't get. In fact, I'd be interested to see how many of the the Bitcoin software designers are libertarians. We know at least one. It's Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with Bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasy.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This 
is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you'd like. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. We also have Skype. Skype in at username lrn.fm. You want to grab some archives of Free Talk Live? Do it for free at freetalklive.com. We've got the last seven days worth of the show right there at the top of the website. You can then go into the archive section and dig back into years worth of Free Talk Live audio archives for free. Also, now available, we've got video archives. Just go to youtube.freetalklive.com to hit up our YouTube channel where every single night we are uploading the full three-hour unedited show of Free Talk Live in video form. So enjoy that. freetalklive.com. Archives are free. There's a great site. It's called freedomsphoenix.com where you can go and sign up for a daily dispatch, and it actually comes in twice a day for me, and I think that uh, for most folks it does. The bo- uh, semi-daily dispatch from freedomsphoenix.com, in, it's a news aggregation site. If you care about the ideas of liberty, they have pretty much every story that's going to be of interest to you. Some of them crackpot and weird. Now, this is a... Uh, um, this is a news aggregator. People are able to participate in this. They they present the stories, and freedomsphoenix.com takes them in. But, you know, it gets a, there's a lot of great stories there, and I think it's worth going through and seeing, going from story to story. If you're interested in having you know, news stories from a liberty perspective presented to you, go to freedoms with an S, phoenix.com, sign up for their daily dispatch, their their semi-daily dispatch, freedomsphoenix.com. Let's go to the phones. We'll talk more about Bitcoin. Uh, Salon.com article saying that libertarians have lost the battle for Bitcoin's soul, and we'll get into the meat of the argument here in a moment. Andrew is with us, though, first. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. Andrew calling from Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ali, and Mark. Hey guys. Um, so as you may have heard, we uh, our basketball team here in Arizona made it to the Elite Eight, and um, we actually lost on Saturday. Which, the basketball uh, team Spart- lost on Saturday. Yeah, during March Madness. Yeah. Are you on the team? On yes, that's right. He gets no. It. <laughs> okay. That'd be cool, but um, no, I'm not. Uh, obviously, live here in Tucson now, and um, uh, after the game, you know that obviously sparked some riots of. You know, some some drunk college kids out at the bars after the game. You know, so they were rioting because their team won. Yay! Let's burn some stuff. Well, they were they were out there kind of causing a ruckus because of because we lost. They would have been out there either way, but oh, okay. you know, you some lost. drunk college kids out messing around, maybe throwing some glass bottles, and um, the Tucson Police Department thought that it'd be necessary to bring in a small army of police officers armed with either machine guns or non-lethal guns, you know, beanbags and whatnot, and um, gas masks, and take these drunk college kids out. I've seen videos of a, uh, a girl who was walking down the street. She was on her phone, and out of nowhere, she was mauled by a cop. You know, wasn't causing any harm, wasn't even involved in the protest. Hmm. And out of nowhere, this cop just comes up and, and beats her. Wow. And, um, yeah, internal investigations has gotten involved. And it's been, you know, prior to the protest when all that was going down, because obviously being here, I can follow it very closely, there were no reports of anyone being harmed or beaten or anything like that. But once the police show up ready to go, you start hearing of all these, you know, beatings and people getting shot with beanbags and you know, all feel, sorts of crazy stuff like that. I dislike college students just as much as the average person, but <laughs> I do have to say that I feel sorry for them on some level because it's like everyone can't decide what is expected of them. On the one hand, uh, the idea is that they're supposed to go there and get an education and prepare themselves for the real world. On the other hand, they're sort of insulated from the real world. Mm-hmm. It's almost like an extension of high school. And so you have this freedom, but what people expect you to do with it, what society kind of expects and is constantly reinforced is that you're supposed to be partying a lot and experiencing all the things that you're supposed to do when you're young because you'll never get another chance once you're tied down with a life of commitments like babies and marriage and things like that. And that this is sort of the progression people expect you to take. But then once you're in school and you're doing all the normal things your peers are doing, um, you know, it's very easy for the police to I mean, it makes the police have a rational reason for targeting college students, which is that they drive 
intoxicated a lot and they, you know, can be mischievous because they go around in groups and they can, you know, like a lot of college students are, you know, causing trouble for some towns and people, locals in these towns where these colleges are often complain about them. So I can see why the police like to have this, um, give the the impression they're cracking down on this bad behavior, but it's also encouraged in society for college students to act out. Yeah, that that is definitely true. And I also wanted to bring up, um, I have a friend who lives in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, mm. and um, he was there for the, uh, there was a uh, Occupy protest for the homeless man that was shot there. Yeah, there's the been video. a lot of incidents of police that brutality. Was Albuquerque, yeah. In Albuquerque, I was actually talking with the guys from the Cop Block Radio Show, which is actually airing now on LRN.FM on Wednesday nights uh, after Free Talk Live. And they've been saying that Albuquerque's police abuse situation is so bad there, they have Albuquerque police abuse stories at least weekly on on their show. I mean, it's just they're picking on homeless people. They're picking on college students. They're just a violent group of thugs, apparently, there in Albuquerque. And there there was some sort of standoff today. Is that right? Um, I'm not familiar with that story, but um, I've definitely been following the uh, homeless man and previous stories before. But um, Well, that's what I meant. Between the, the protest. protesters and the police, I, I saw some headline. I, I did not take the time to get into it, but a uh, headline about how the protesters regarding the homeless guy had some kind of a standoff with the police. I don't know you know, what that what form that took, if it was an armed thing or not. It just sounded like it sounded like things are really hitting the streets in, uh, in Albuquerque. And you're saying you had a friend there. Yes. Yeah. He um, gave me somewhat of an insight. I didn't talk to him in detail about it. But um, yeah, there were a few hundred people down there protesting and the uh, police there had the exact same appearance and formation that they did here in Tucson. You know, a straight line across shooting tear gas, um, all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, yeah, they're really, you know, it seems like they're really flexing their power, you know, whether it's drunk college kids after a basketball game or people protesting for a, you know, what what appears to be an innocent man that was shot that shouldn't have been. So across the board, whatever form of protest it is, they seem to really want to crack down and eliminate the voices and people out there that are trying to bring shed light on, you know, whatever it is they're wanting to do. Do you think this is the Southwest? I mean, I... I wouldn't feel like no. that was going on in New Hampshire. Uh, well, the, I can tell you, Mark, that during, uh, I believe it was, I don't know if it was last year or two, a couple of years ago, there was a, a college party that was happening in somebody's front yard in Keene, New Hampshire, and the cops well, showed up with pepper spray and started spraying the crowd. I'm sorry, you know, the cop, the, okay, I've seen these p- college parties that, that spill out into the lawn, Ian, and these kids are out there at one o'clock in the morning. This was in the middle of the daytime. Well, you know, people don't want that in their neighborhoods. Look, well, either get I'm just crap- letting you know it happens. Happens in Keene, New Hampshire, too. Uh, Stan, it's not a protest. Andrew, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Thanks for sharing that with us. Well, no, he first started talking about how there were college he was students conflating them in the streets. Uh, and anyway, more on the way. This is Free Talk Live. I didn't say it was a protest. Self reliance, survival supplies, survival skills, national experts. Get it all at the only free to attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, a must be there event. Presented by American Living, this massive expo will include special guests David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers, plus GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Pepper Network. Along with many other leading national experts. Learn life saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. 
With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. When I signed up for the Free State Project, I was excited by the prospect of moving somewhere with other people that had liberty as a goal. When I got here to New Hampshire, I was stunned by the great weather and the natural beauty. The Free State Project is helping to move Liberty forward. Want to be involved? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. That's freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want here. Toll free number 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Uh, do send that contact request along first before you Skype in. Otherwise, it's not going to work. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian, Allie, and Mark. All right, so, of course, we will uh, take your calls about absolutely anything that you want to discuss here. We've still got more to say on the Bitcoin subject. We're going to continue with more of that here in moments. So, LeaderAmp is a program that is intended to teach you how to be more convincing, to give you the the, the developmental skills to be a better... uh, You can use the term salesperson if that's what you want to do, but not everybody's in sales. What they don't understand is is that we are all selling all the time. We're selling our ideas, our wants, our desires. And the ability to uh, develop this skill, the skill of being more convincing, is it, it's a, extraordinarily valuable. Whether you want to get a project done at work or get a raise or uh, you know be with the person that uh, the person of your dreams. This skill is incredibly valuable, and LeaderAmp has a whole new way of going about it. Because usually, if you've got these ideas, you write a book, and people will either buy it or they don't, and they either abide by it or they don't for a little while, and then they forget about it, and whatever. LeaderAmp is, in fact, uh, an app that's under development right now. You can participate in their Indiegogo campaign and 
purchased different levels. Uh, I have also purchased in, and I want to be rated, see how convincing I am. And I think that this is going to be incredibly valuable. What they're going to do is they're going to show me where I can improve, where I do well. They also rank, interestingly, other historical figures on these charts to show you sort of how they weren't perfect, but had an opportunity to get better and knew how to uh, you know how to play to their strengths. So you go to leaderamp.freetalklive.com. It's leaderamp.freetalklive.com. The, the app isn't ready yet. It's being built. But if you want to help advance an approach to grow freedom, lovers, persuasion, skills, we'd love for you to join the community. Feel free to pre-order at Indiegogo, um, the Indiegogo campaign at leaderamp.freetalklive.com. So the salon story here uh, that we've been kind of going through a little bit here and there throughout the show, is claiming the libertarians have lost the battle for Bitcoin's soul. They say that the first, uh, they're citing a, a couple of panel discussions that happened at South by Southwest, and they cite a Bitcoin fanatic Jeremy Liu, who explains that the first wave of Bitcoin users were radical libertarians and cryptography enthusiasts, that the second wave were people who appreciate the fact that it can be used anonymously and want to use that for various illegal purposes, and they are claiming the third wave is, and this is, that, they, that we're in the third wave is their claim, and the third wave will be merchants who will come to the conclusion that Bitcoin is very useful for avoiding credit card fees. And I think that's, you know, that may be an, uh, an accurate assessment that, yeah, Bitcoin are needs to be useful in order to be adopted. Right. right. <laughs> and so he it's goes not on, just going to be a libertarian and be adopted. We've yeah. got all kinds of libertarian crap out there that doesn't get adopted. Right. Exactly true. So, uh, so he explains, the author here explains what credit card fees are and kind of how they work. So I'm skipping that, uh, that portion. He says the, redu redu excuse me, the reason for the reduced fee, meaning that Bitcoin charges next to nothing for a transaction fee, I mean literally pennies compared to Visa and MasterCard and American Express, the reason for the reduced fee is that much of what Visa and MasterCard require merchants to pay for, that is assuming the risk that the consumer will actually pay for the stuff he or she just purchased. I mean, essentially Visa and MasterCard, they're fronting the money for the person with the credit card. Makes sense, yeah. And so there's risk involved there. If the person, you know, balks and doesn't pay or whatever, they're just they fall behind, etc. Visa and MasterCard have to pick up those risks and there's costs involved in that. And of course, there's costs involved in customer service operations and all the things that are tied in with dealing with that risk. There's really no customer service in Bitcoin and there's well, no way to uh, y you've got to pay because you're paying up front. And that's how it and, th and that's what he rightfully points out here. All of that's automatically handled by the Bitcoin protocol, the blockchain, which is a giant ledger containing the official record of every Bitcoin transaction ever conducted, essentially eliminates this problem because every computer connected to the network effectively knows the location of every Bitcoin in existence and can check instantly if the payment being sent is legitimate. Additionally, by buying and selling the Bitcoins as close as possible to either side of the transaction, both parties eliminate the problem of extreme volatility in the price of Bitcoin that's many, uh, made many people skeptical about the currency. It doesn't matter if the price of Bitcoin drops by $100 in the span of a few hours if you're only holding the currency for a couple of minutes at most. It's true. And so all of that analysis is correct. But he goes on to say, as a result, it's easy to uh, it's easy to imagine merchants passing those savings on to consumers who could, in turn, receive a discount on products purchased using Bitcoin. This discount wouldn't come as a result of a merchant's ideological or political desire to spread the gospel of Bitcoin, but rather as a simple business decision to gain a competitive advantage by cutting price cost by cutting prices as costs decrease. Well, libertarianism's lost the soul of Bitcoin. <laughs> now, that is exactly what libertarians would want to see happen. We don't care if a business owner picks up Bitcoin. Now, look, in the case of the Overstock CEO, that guy's a libertarian. He's absolutely doing it for ideological purposes, first and foremost. Well, it probably, but, but plus the fact that he thinks it's good technology. I just disagree with you entirely. That guy's been on this show. If mm -hmm. he wanted to advertise Overstock on Free Talk Live to, for, to push the ideas of liberty, he could do that. He is not yeah. accepting Bitcoin for ideological reasons. If so, he would dump a well, bunch of money for a a advertising money on Free Talk Live. He's doing it because he became aware of a groundbreaking technology that he believes is going to move forward. Right, but his statements make it pretty clear that he understands that Bitcoin is a threat to the central bank, and he values that, and so those are... He values I mean, I've seen that, statements. but it's only a threat because it's competent, Ian. 
If it wasn't right. competent, he wouldn't accept it. Obviously not, Mark. He's not going to take some joke currency like Dogecoin. Uh, but but he does absolutely come at it from an ideological perspective. Stop denying that. His own I, statements make it clear. No. So anyway, my point being that most business owners aren't like the Overstock CEO. They're not libertarians. But these are persuasive things. The idea I disagree were- with your statement. My, my statement is okay. that he— Well, I've read th- the guy's quotes. I have too, Ian. It's not like you're the only person that's read something here. The fact is the man became aware— I'm the only aware- one who's shou- uh, not shouting, though. I'll tell he, you that. Well, that doesn't make you right— I can lower my voice. It doesn't make me right, Ian. You're still, you still disagree. I still disagree with you. Mm-hmm. The fact is, the man became aware of Bitcoin because he's a libertarian, an ideological libertarian. Mm. But he's not going to accept them if uh, he, he believes in them because they're going to move forward, not because he wants them to move forward. Mm. It's well, not a want; it's a belief. He can't predict, nor can you predict whether or not Bitcoin is going to continue moving forward tomorrow. So, anyway, well, Alan? I was, I'm wondering if maybe. This is an attempt to dis this article, and maybe there's other articles out there like it. They're trying to distance Bitcoins from the libertarians who got it to where it is today because they're thinking that like Bitcoin has this public image and they want stores to be comfortable carrying it without people thinking, oh, the owner of this store is a libertarian, and they just want to separate Bitcoin for its usefulness, separate from the causes why libertarians like Bitcoin. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like you don't want you don't want people to feel like if they carry Bitcoin that they're taking some kind of or not accept Bitcoin, excuse me, that they're taking some kind of political stance because a lot of businesses try to avoid staying. That's true. Staying out, of, they want to avoid politics because it can they're drive scared. away customers. Yep, and and it's certainly uh, that's absolutely true. And I don't think I don't think most business owners are going to know the libertarian history of Bitcoin when it's Agreed. presented to them. Uh, it's just that it's going to be something that you can save your customers money on. It's a reliable thing, and it works. That doesn't mean libertarians have lost the soul of Bitcoin. That's a very liberty-oriented, pro-market viewpoint that, hey, this is good for the market. Therefore, most libertarians I know would support it. Now, I have to ask you a question, Ian. You did slip in there something about Dogecoin being a joke currency. What makes you say that? Well, I have some people in the chat who are kind of upset about there's it. There's the dog to start with. Uh, they, they've got a puppy on the front, and it says, like, much value, so lucrative. I mean, they, it's, it is a joke currency. It is a joke currency, although it has So you're not saying some... it's not valuable. You're just saying that the people who well, use it are it kind has of jokesters. A, it has an arbitrary value set by market speculators, but it's very, there's very, very little you can buy with Dogecoin. Although Today. I will admit you can buy some things. Daryl Perry's accepting it for FPP.cc. He's not buying anything. We're coming, yeah, no, he can sell you books for it. We're okay. coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. 
from wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas. Liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control here. Toll-free number... 855 450 free Bitcoin is on the table for discussion at the moment, but you can bring up anything that might happen to be on your mind. With you tonight, it is Ian here. Allie. And Mark. Allie's got a show called ALP, and that stands for Something New Every Week. That's right. I don't even think last time we came up with a <laughs> thing for it to stand for, but it means awesome, loving, positive every week, really, because that's the attitude we try to keep during the show and that is the attitude we encourage from our listeners and chatters and callers and everyone involved alpshow.com now i can't say i know for sure do you have a bitcoin link up on alp show that's right if you wanted to tip us at alp it would be alpshow.com slash tip jar Perfect. You need to put up a Dogecoin. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, thing because you those those adherents, they're they're zealotous. I uh, yeah. If I was first of all, I don't have any way for anybody to give me any Dogecoin. But if I were to receive Dogecoin, I'd probably transfer it immediately into Bitcoin. Uh, if I were to accept Dogecoin. way to not get any more Dogecoin. But I would. Uh, <laughs> but I I wouldn't want to accept Dogecoin because I feel like that is um, it's a distraction. From alternative currency, from like legitimate, I disagree. Alternative currencies. You think it's a good thing, Mark? I, I don't think it's a terrible thing. I've gotten out of all the alt currencies mm-hmm. simply because they, to me, at this point, they're nothing but sheer speculation. Nearly, nearly nothing but sheer speculation. And most of their cur- purchasing power comes from the fact that you can turn them into bitcoins easily and quickly. Um, but. I, I don't have a, you know, people are coming up with ideas that ideas that are at the very least can be implemented through some protocols on Bitcoin. And I'm for that, too. So, Ali, what do you think about Dogecoin? Because you'd asked us, uh, you said some, apparently some people in the chat were upset that I, I called it a joke <laughs> earlier. I don't have a very strong opinion about it, um, honestly, but I think that I'm, I'm not totally convinced that Bitcoin's necessarily going to be the one that wins out. Me either. Because it could, you know, another one of these currencies could, you know, 
be the new one for whatever reason. Bitcoin gets a bad name, maybe for being associated with us crazy libertarians. And Dogecoin is the more fun currency. Who Mm. knows? Like you said, the people behind it aren't taking it super seriously. Bitcoin has this very strong, serious vibe to it. A soul that's very serious. (laughs) Yeah, it's the narrative behind Bitcoin is worse than the narrative behind Dogecoin. Yeah, (laughs) possibly. If I I would would not disagree that one of the other currencies could come and slip up, um, you know, pull the rug out from under Bitcoin. I would, however, disagree that it is Litecoin or Dogecoin. I just don't see that, and I'm willing to put bet against it. So, uh, what is Dogecoin? Well, Doge is an internet meme that originated, I don't know when, but probably a couple of years ago. 4chan likely uh, did it, but I don't, honestly, I don't know what the history of Doge is. I'm just, you, if it's an internet meme, you can pretty much guess that it was 4chan that originated it. <laughs> um, and, and it's the, you know, it's this picture of this dog, and I don't know what kind of dog it is. It could be, could just as well be doggy misspelled. Or Doge, Doge, Doge dog. Yeah, but what I'm saying there's is there's a do- good chance it's dog doggy misspelled. Yeah. yeah, there's a very good chance, and then just the rest of us have pronounced it this way as though a it's a it's an Italian count, uh, but you know <laughs> over time. Right. Rather than me speculating here, I have pulled up knowyourmeme.com. Uh, knowyourmeme.com is a really really handy website to explain more than you ever would have wanted to know about memes. Doge is a slang term for dog that is primarily associated with pictures of Shiba Inus nicknamed Shiba, and internal monologue captions on Tumblr. These photos may be photoshopped to change the dog's face or captioned with interior monologues in Comic Sans font. The use of the misspelled word Doge to refer to a dog dates back to June 24, 2005, when it was mentioned in an episode of Homestar Runner's Puppet Show. Wow. <laughs> in the episode titled... Burninate. I used to watch that all the time. Homestar Runner was a great uh, website. Titled BizCast Friday Number 1, Homestar calls Strongbad his D-O-G-E while trying to distract him from his work. So that's where it came from, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, on February 23, 2010, Japanese kindergarten teacher Atsuko Sato posted several photos of her rescue-adopted Shiba Inu dog, Kabusu, to her personal blog. Among the photos included a peculiar shot of Kabusu sitting on a couch while glaring sideways at the camera with raised eyebrows. And this has become yeah, that's the, the, the classic Doge meme. In December of 2013, shortly after the breakout of Doge, the tech news site The Verge published an article identifying the Kabosu as the original Shiba Inu depicted in the meme. In addition to Kabosu, The Verge also identified Suki, a Shiba Inu, who lives with San Francisco-based photographer Jonathan Fleming as the scarfed dog portrayed in another popular instance of the meme. And then it goes on to kind of talk more about uh, 4chan and uh, show some <laughs> notable examples of the Doge meme, some of which are pretty ridiculous. And then it gets to Dogecoin. On December 6th, Bitcoin Talk Forum member Dogecoin introduced an alternative cryptocurrency based on the meme as a satire of the Bitcoin boom in a thread titled Dogecoin, Very Currency, Many Coin, Wow, version 1.1 released. Similar to Bitcoin and its derivatives, Dogecoin can be mined and exchanged for goods and services among the participants, though it is programmed to level out at a threshold of up to 100 billion coins. 100 billion. Hmm. And prevent any use of special Bitcoin mining equipment like ASICs. In comparison, Bitcoin will cap out at 21 million coins, and Litecoin will support up to 84 million coins in circulation. So essentially, Dogecoin was kind of a... It seems like it was maybe a parody of all of the altcoins in a way that, like, you know, a parody of this glut of everybody's got a coin kind of coins. I There's, love the eliminating ASICs thing, though. ASICs are special mining equipment used to mine Bitcoin, which makes it very difficult for the average person to compete, would you These say? These days, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, was was Dogecoin making fun of Bitcoin or was it making fun of all of the imitators of Bitcoin? I don't really know what the the purpose was, but regardless, well, I don't think that the Doge people care. They just wanted to make fun. You know, that's just right. it's just fun. Yeah, and that's fine. You know, it's fine to have fun. I just don't want to spend my time pushing Dogecoin uh, when it is a joke. It's a funny joke, um, but it doesn't it doesn't make sense to try to push it as a serious. Currency. A lot of people have gotten rich on this funny joke, though, and I don't know when the joke ends. Isn't and it- isn't it kind of based on the same premise of Bitcoin, though? It's an altcoin, so There's, yes. Yeah. They're yeah, all the same, basically. There are a thousand 
different people who have taken, you know, quickly copied and pasted the Bitcoin protocols and made their own coin that's based on Bitcoin. Right. Um, and that doesn't make them valuable. It's only that people want them. The joke is what made Dogecoin valuable. People are like, yeah, I'm in on the dog joke. Give <laughs> give me some of that. And, and right now it's the number five uh, market cap currency. I in thought the it was world. the third. Well, I think Litecoin is number three. For me, well, two. if I'm on, if I'm honest, part of what at first made me afraid of Bitcoin was that people took it so seriously and, um, you know, basically made it into something that didn't seem. It seemed like less fun and more like a like a, a lifestyle choice. Like only a real libertarian uses mm. Bitcoin or something like that. And that like turns me off. I don't like that kind of thing. It just feels like too much pressure, but with something, but then when I started using Bitcoins, I realized it is fun. And so I think that that's part of the appeal is that it's easy and fun to do. Um, and you get to be sort of part of this club of people who know about this different currency. So I could see, Dogecoin being cool in that way, but I don't know much about it except that I hear it talked about here and there alongside Bitcoin. Yeah, and I think that's the only real downside to Dogecoin is that it is kind of out there. It has hit the news more so than a lot of the alternative currencies have. And is that doing damage to Bitcoin? I or you know or the the idea of alternative currencies or the idea of you know something besides uh, the state currency. Well, you got maybe do, I'm speculating. There. I think you have to do more, a lot more. A whole lot more than go to the Bitcoin protocol, change a couple of things up. Like, uh, was it Michael Lee? Is that his name? I want to make sure I get it right. You talking about the Litecoin, Litecoin guy? guy? I don't know. Uh, I think it's I think it's Michael Lee. Um, and you know, he basic he admits this took him twenty minutes. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the third most valuable cryptocurrency mm -hmm. took him twenty minutes to create, and it happened to be that he was basically second to market, almost second to market. Yeah. Um, and that's why he was there. You've got it. You're gonna have have to do more than go to the Bitcoin protocol, switch a few things, turn a couple of dials and, and, and slide a couple of no, sliders and create something new. And that's what Dogecoin is. It's it's that. This phenomenon, in my opinion, the, 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 the cryptocurrency trading phenomenon is fun and it rides on the tails of Bitcoins, but it is a, that is the fad that will at some point or another fade away. Now there's going to be some other people that really have created other online cryptocurrencies or things like cryptocurrencies that have huge and different innovations, those are the ones that I think might be competition to Bitcoin. But to take the Bitcoin protocol and switch a couple of things up, not it. Yeah, and that's really all that most of these things really are. There's 208 currencies right now listed. 208 of which 207 are altcoins compared to Bitcoin. Uh, CoinMarketCap.com. Ripple isn't, though. Yeah, what is the Ripple thing about? That's Ripple, not even a Bitcoin Ripple is centrally currency. controlled um, through a company, essentially. I wonder it's why they listed it Trading on here. shares, because it is an alt, uh, alt currency. It has I its see. own shares. All right, so CoinMarketCap.com is where you can see that. We'll continue with our uh, hour three of Free Talk Live coming up next, 855 450 free. Remember how bad your allergies were last year? <laughs> When they hit again, be prepared with new Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour, the first full-strength 24-hour prescription nasal spray available without a prescription. Unlike antihistamines, it blocks more of the body's chemical responses that cause nasal allergy symptoms, relieving the worst of them, including congestion, for 24 hours. New Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed may take up to one week of daily use to feel the most symptom relief. Here's something you don't hear on the radio every day. Someone who can't see. I am totally blind, and I go through periods where I'm unable to sleep at night and feel like I'm constantly running but can never quite catch up. But this isn't a sleep problem. It's something called non-24. Learn about the link between total blindness and your symptoms. Visit learnmorenon24.com or call 855-856-2424. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com 
You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, March 31st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,294, silver opened at $19.93, and Bitcoin is trading at $462.34. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Online at affordablesound.com or call them 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Online at SovereignBTC.com. And support comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights at 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. In the news, on Sunday afternoon, enraged Albuquerque citizens gathered outside of police headquarters to protest the March 16th killing of James Boyd at the hands of the APD. Body camera footage from the APD shows officers unloading beanbags, stun guns, and live ammunition on Boyd. Protesters marched for around eight hours, calling on the APD chief to be fired. Around 9.30 p.m., the police began firing tear gas canisters, claiming the demonstrators were vandalizing property. A sweeping reform bill was approved by Greek officials as over 10,000 citizens rallied in Athens to protest the latest international loans for the faltering nation. The reforms were debated in a fast-track two-day session, leading protesters and lawmakers to push back against the bailout from the European Commission, the European Central Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. More than 30 people are killed in the capital of the Central African Republic, leading the UN to call for more forces to be dispatched to that area. It happened when peacekeeping soldiers from Chad opened fire on civilians over the weekend. The soldiers were returning from a mission in the country's interior when their vehicle was hit by a grenade, and they began shooting into a nearby crowd. Al Jazeera reports it's unclear how many have been killed in the country since violence started in December. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone 800-874-9760. Support also comes from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Bend White Boulevard, number 203. And support for Liberty Meat also comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas, online at CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, March 31st, 2014. Check out the website, thelibertybeat.com. According to Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, the company is preparing to expand by providing Internet access to the entire world. Using solar-powered high-altitude planes and low-orbiting satellites, the Facebook Connectivity Lab plans to deploy and deliver reliable Internet connections. Zuckerberg stated that his company is already working with many of the world's leading experts in aerospace and communications technology, including researchers from a British company called Ascenta that helped create the world's longest solar-powered drone. 122 world leaders were targeted by the NSA. That's according to a Der Spiegel and the Intercept newspaper report based on documents leaked by Edward Snowden. Along with German's chancellor, other leaders of other foreign countries specifically named as NSA targets are Peru, Somalia, Syria, Guatemala, and Colombia. The report also states that the United States intelligence counterpart in Britain targeted three German companies for surveillance. Add yet another failure to the many experience since the rollout of Obamacare. People trying to apply and enroll for private health insurance before Monday's midnight deadline found it impossible. That's because the healthcare.gov website again malfunctioned, leaving would-be users in the dark. NBC News reports the site began functioning in a limited capacity at one point, 
but was still unable to allow actual sign-ups. Support for Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online at bitmaintech.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, March 31st, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. While waiting to interview for a web consultant position with local marketing firm Bizco, applicant Ryan Ehrlich told Onion reporters he wasn't entirely sure he was dynamic enough for his prospective employer. When I first saw that the agency was looking for a leader willing to contribute as a valued member of the team, I thought it was the perfect fit. But the more I think about it, the less I'm sure I'm actually an energetic self-starter. I mean, I think I'm a versatile independent thinker, but Honestly, how do you even know for sure? Ehrlich, who found Bisco's online job posting earlier this week, went on to express doubts that he truly possesses the forward-thinking instincts and next-generation idea assets required to work with the fast-paced marketing firm's team of self-starters. Can I reimagine a brand for a digital landscape? Sure. But do I really have the energy, skills, enthusiasm, and passion to be a part of this dynamic, growth-oriented company? I just don't know. Oh, God. Who am I kidding? There's... There's no way I'm on the cutting edge. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll free at 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you on the site. With you tonight, Ian here. Allie. And Mark. And don't forget, uh, you can actually create the content of freetalklive.com. Everything that you see on that front page as you scroll down, those numbered items, uh, those there's votes. You can vote on them whether you like or dislike. You can submit that content. So if you find a news article or a blog post or maybe a YouTube video, something you think's fun, exciting, outrageous, upsetting, you know, whatever it is you want to share with us and our listeners, you can submit right there to the front page at freetalklive.com. It will then uh, either be voted up or down by our other listeners, and you can vote on things as well. And then we'll know what you think is useful, fun, and exciting, or interesting, or whatever. So go to freetalklive.com. You can get interactive there. Again, that is freetalklive.com. 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. We were talking about Bitcoin and uh, kind of the overarching, uh, I guess, article that we would focused on tonight and it has resulted in all kinds of side tangent discussions is the Salon.com syndication piece from the Daily Dot about how libertarians have lost the battle for Bitcoin's soul. And I'm not going to read the entirety of this piece. Uh, there's another, there's a middle segment where they talk about some companies who are very interested in government regulation of Bitcoin and kind of connecting Bitcoin to the existing financial system. They then talk about the Bitcoin moms in Austin, Texas, who are libertarians looking to get off the grid. And the article continues here. The best indicator for the Krakens and Coinbases of the world, or that Kraken, the Krakens and Coinbases of the world are likely to see their visions vindicated, came during a session near the tail end of South by Southwest. Tucked into a small conference room in a hotel in downtown Austin, a few dozen people gathered for a meetup hosted by the Bitcoin-focused venture ca- uh, capital group Bit Angels. The session drew a lot of people. Now we had uh, the CEO of Bit Angels or whatever, the founder of Bit Angels, on the air while we were at the Texas Bitcoin. Conference. We did, and he this seemed isn't to be the same conference we're talking about, is it? No, uh, South by Southwest actually happened the, that weekend. So a couple it days was, later. Yeah, it was the same week, but not the same conference. And he is actually a signer of the Free State Project statement of intent. Yep, that's right. The session drew a lot of people working on startups in the cryptocurrency space, or people from companies in the financial sector interested in taking the first cursory steps toward integrating Bitcoin in their business models. Russell, excuse me, Russell Castagnaro, for example, is the president of the Hawaii Information Consortium, a private firm that handles online payments and other web services for Hawaii state government. He attended the meetup to judge the viability of letting Hawaii residents eventually use Bitcoin to pay their taxes and other government fees. 
Castagnaro told the Daily Dot that Bitcoin has myriad advantages over other online payment methods. It's fast. That's what I love about it is, is that if you have, uh, say, the CryptoKit uh, plug-in extension for, for Chrome, and mm -hmm. this is just the first of the first, you can send Bitcoin f fast uh, online. And he goes on to point out some of the things about Bitcoin that are very, very valuable, like the fact that there's no chargebacks, uh, which is a big risk, and there's you know no 2% fee. The fees are very, very low. To even consider using Bitcoin, says the D Daily Dot piece, for direct government payments, any company facilitating those payments is necessarily going to have to jump through just the sort of regulatory hoops many of the currency's original boosters took up Bitcoin to specifically avoid. The ecosystem of Bitcoin companies is adapting to a world where dealing with strict government regulation of cryptocurrencies will likely become unavoidable. When one budding Bitcoin entrepreneur said he was planning on fighting government attempts to regulate his business under money transmitter laws, BitAngel's co-founder David Johnson recommended partnering with an established institution to handle all of the financial back, back end along with its attendant regulatory heavy lifting while exclusively focusing on directly interfacing with customers. Why is that not libertarian? Uh, hiring a company to handle interacting with the government? Yeah. I wouldn't say that's unlibertarian or libertarian. Isn't that it's just what, what the business owners do? Well, isn't that what the article writer is suggesting? Yeah, the, the article writer is suggesting that uh, Bitcoin's anonymous and uh, you know wild west flavor is going to be tempered, and this is, you know, I've been saying this all along. This is going to mostly be true. You can go into, uh, you know, many government places and you can play with pay with cash. Mm -hmm. Cash, green pieces of paper is what I'm talking about here for those in the U.S. And I understand you folks around the world have your funny little colored money. Um, the you know the green pieces of paper, you lay them down and you pay for whatever. You get a receipt and you're paid. But that same cash is the same cash that's used in drug deals around the world. I love how the government um, and you know the establishment media like this guy want to say that Bitcoin is uh, you know the currency of uh, drug dealers. What are you kidding me? U.S. dollars, one hundred dollar mm. bills with Benjamin Franklin's face on them that say United States of America. That's the government of that's the yep. money of drug dealers, and I'm talking about the drug dealers that don't work for the U.S. government. I guarantee more drug dealers, at least in the U.S., will take dollars over Bitcoin. Absolutely. So I mean that's that's a bunch of hooey, and you know dollars have an anonymous aspect to them. Sure. I can go in and pay. I can have a pocket full of money. I can go in and I can pay my get my car license. If that place will take, because a lot of a lot of government agencies just won't take cash anymore. They won't take their own money right. <laughs> because they can't trust sure. their employees. I guess I don't know the reason, but the ones that you can, you go in, you pay cash, and then I can walk around the back and buy some drugs from somebody anonymously if that's what I want to do. Johnson also pointed to Coin Comply, a company that helps Bitcoin startups deal with anti-money laundering rules, as an excellent resource for young organizations. This sort of bottom line minded thinking was pervasive during Bitcoin events throughout the conference, and it was striking for its lack of ideological fervor. In stark contrast to the tenor of the influential online forums like Reddit's r slash Bitcoin community, there was virtually no railing against the Federal Reserve, and there was barely a mention of government snooping on your financial activity. If free market libertarianism was spoken of at all, it was mentioned as a way to mark the distance between where Bitcoin started and where it's ultimately going. That's fine. fine. Things can have can be multidimensional. Like I can, I can be your friend, Ian, for one reason and a different reason. Why Mark is your friend? Like you can see, you can like something for different reasons. And in the same way, if somebody wants to use Bitcoin to go on the Silk Road or Agro Marketplace or one of the other underground black markets, none of this regulatory talk is going to stop them from doing it. So. It seems like the argument, and by the way, I've gotten through the article at this point, it seems like the article is making the argument that because some people are begging for regulation and that there's sort of this mainstream interest in Bitcoin, that that means it's lost its libertarian roots, uh, that libertarians have lost control of the right. soul of Bitcoin, is, uh, is frankly ridiculous, especially considering that one of the, the primary programmers of Bitcoin is a libertarian. His name's Gavin. We've met him personally. He's a listener and supporter of Free Talk Live. Yeah, I could be completely wrong here, because, uh, but it seems to me that the very controlled currency is like uh, Visa and MasterCard. I can't, mm -hmm. if I so choose, 
uh, t- go buy drugs with Visa and MasterCard. I have to it's go to an unlikely. ATM. I have to give the government the, and you know some other people their little cut off the top when I get some kind of uh, you know cash advance or whatever it is, and then I can go about buying my drugs if that's what I want to do. So that's the controlled one. These, uh, you know, Bitcoin. It they have. It's not. It's not regulated. You can regulate the use of it, but mm. you know whether whether people want to comply or not. That it's doesn't matter. Them. Yeah. And so, sure, some people are going to comply. Some people are going to want to jump through the hoops, like the guy you interviewed from the Bitcoin ATM business, the Coin Vault. What he's, was it called? He's Coin, legit, right? Coin what? What was it? Coin. Uh, uh, it's it's Coin Vault ATM. Coin Vault ATM. So, uh, you know, he wants to be as regulated as possible because, you know, and rightfully, he's scared to death of these people. Likely. He wants to get bitcoins in people's hands, yeah. and you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to put an ATM out there without getting and get bitcoins in people's hands without following these rules. Well, we may be trying to do it here soon in Keene, but. Uh, uh, you know, it's that's an Entirely activist project different thing. Yeah. Than, uh, rather than a business. So I don't agree that the the soul of Bitcoin has been lost. Uh, it's expanding, and that's what we want. That's what libertarians want to see happen to Bitcoin. We don't want it to just be an internal libertarian currency where you can only trade with libertarians. Libertarians, liberty-minded people want to see the mainstream accept Bitcoin. And yep. obviously there's going to be some icky parts of that where some people are going to bend over and let the IRS stick it to them. Uh, but that's their problem. I Eight- feel like the earliest adopters of Bitcoins were libertarians. They want to see it go mainstream. Exactly right. 855, 450 free. And the basis and the ideals behind Bitcoin are still there. It's still a way to defeat the central state. More on the way. It's Free Talk Live. If you've got aches and pain and soreness, it could be chronic inflammation. Listen to Dave talk about Relief Factor 4. I was in a sawmill accident and suffered with pain and discomfort for 60 years. I heard about Relief Factor 4 and decided to order it. And in four days, I was walking without a limp and without pain. I am thrilled. For more information or to order Relief Factor 4, go online at relieffactor4.com. That's relieffactor4.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. It's the video sensation that's taking the internet by storm. A web series on YouTube passed the 100 views mark this week. Titled Andrew and John, the wildly popular webisodes feature roommates Andrew Vanier and John Haney playing fictionalized versions of themselves in unusual situations, mostly set in and around their Chicago apartment. Dude, did you get my tart? What's a tart? Oh, you just texted me a fart. Their latest short titled Laundry Day reached the unprecedented 100 view milestone this week after a heavy promotional push in which the duo posted the skits to their Facebook pages. The hit video features the roommates wearing unconventional outfits while scrounging up enough change to do laundry in their basement. Other popular episodes include Foreign Landlord featuring John's friend Brett from work and a video where Andrew suspects John might be a zombie. Our videos consistently get over 50 views now, but Laundry Day, that's the first mm-hmm. one that it's really taken off. Yeah, everyone I know has seen it. It's completely viral. This is the Onion News Network. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, toll free number for you, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Alternative currencies has been the overarching discussion here tonight. Bitcoin, of course, doing very, very well. Critics, especially those over at Salon, who really seem to have an anti-libertarian axe to grind as of late, are saying that uh, libertarians have lost the soul of Bitcoin. But ultimately, the ideas behind Bitcoin are still there, and they're very, very libertarian. Bitcoin is a disruptive uh, technology. It is a currency that is decentralized. It eliminates the central banking system. It uh, eliminates the centralized credit card. Card uh, the need for. providers, it doesn't yeah, the eliminate need for. Them. Right, well, right, they, exactly. It's uh, the, the the Bitcoin system makes them irrelevant, essentially, and uh, it puts the power of money back into the hands of the people, and that's a huge deal, especially considering that libertarians in general are against centralization, and Bitcoin is a major decentralizing factor in the world of money, and that can only be a good thing. And if more people uh, if more people adopt Bitcoin, whether or not they're libertarian or whether or not they know anything about libertarianism, is irrelevant. We want people to want Bitcoin because Bitcoin is valuable, not because it's liberty-oriented or liberty-friendly. It is liberty-oriented and liberty-friendly, and so therefore the more people adopt it, the closer the death of the state, as far as I'm concerned, and I mean in a peaceful manner, it will just die out from being not necessary. Well, so, I one of the other things don't know that, what I think about that at all. <laughs> well, I think that that uh, there are a lot of people who believe that the use of Bitcoin and the more proliferation of Bitcoin will result in helping to uh, to kill the state because ultimately the state being able to print money is a huge factor in how they're able to fund their operations, specifically warmongering, which is ultimately for the most part, funded through the printing press. Well, right. Let's not underestimate the power that comes from a, a people relying on the government to issue the currency and the manipulation of that currency and the way they, they use it, like to fund wars, as you are suggesting, Ian. It's all a big part of their game, and they want... They wouldn't be able to grow to the extent that they have without that power. Right. So if it's, if it's taken away from them, which as a lot of people have predicted, would be through the market. Um, you know, I think Bitcoin is a is a cool a cool new step in that direction. It's a huge step in that direction. And it direction. is peaceful, like you said, Ian. Like, you know, people are have postulated about how to end the state for a long time, and there's been arguments about the methods that will lead to that, um, you know, eventual occurrence. But Right, Bitcoin on its own isn't going to end the state, but it is a very important tool in hastening right. its demise. If you can imagine how Bitcoin could play out and take away some power from the government, that would be a peaceful way to absolve the government of power. But it, like other things like it could do the same thing. Another way to hasten the end of the state is to join the Free State Project. If you love the ideas of liberty, you really should consider getting together with what is now over 15,555 other people that we just crossed. There's a lot of fives. That threshold uh, just, I believe, today or yesterday with Yay, the Free fives. State Project. Lots of people have signed on for this project, but it's that's because it's a good idea. Uh, the idea is to concentrate liberty-minded people, many of whom are very interested in Bitcoin, uh, all in the same place. 
and that place is New Hampshire. We've got over 1,500 people who are here already as part of the Free State Project. Over 15,555 have pledged to make the move. We want to reach 20,000 people who've made that pledge. So we're still working on getting to that 20,000 point. If you love freedom, you really owe it to yourself to go and check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. Let's go to the phones and the fun. Chad is in Michigan listening to WKZO in Kalamazoo. Hey, Chad. Hey guys. Hey Chad. What's I, up? Uh, I, well, I, I heard the the uh, the part about the adoption, uh, and I agree. Bitcoin's got a definite uh, advantage, but I like to say I think Dogecoin is currently eating their lunch uh, between sending the Jamaican bobsled team to Sochi, and now the uh, NASCAR sponsorship. Yep. <laughs> I think uh, Dogecoin is going to be. I think it's going to be huge. It's fun. Now tell me well, something it's important. Fun. Well, tell me something more about the uh, the NASCAR thing, because you've you've basically named the only two things that Dogecoin's ever been involved in uh, is the you know the the Jamaican bobsled team. Which did they ever actually make it to Sochi, or did they not raise enough money to uh, to make it? I never heard a follow up on that story. I don't know about that one because mm-hmm. I, I, I heard they didn't quite uh, raise enough, and I don't know if there was ever a follow up on that. So now the NASCAR sponsorship. Some Dogecoin enthusiasts have allegedly sponsored an entire wrapping of a car in the NASCAR circuit. Or NASCAR is that correct? And it, that is going to happen on Talladega. It's going to be cool. Are so they it's, one, it's cool. one race then. Okay. Uh, yes, one race. Are they paying for the sponsorship with Dogecoin? Uh, that is correct. Yes, they are. I'm sure it was somewhere. I'm sure it was somewhere converted into cash. I'm sure it was too. Mm. I'm sure along the way it was somewhere. It's interesting. But the the I, entire I, donation was done in Doge. Yeah, I think it's interesting. And look, I, 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 it's a prediction, right? I mean, that's all I've got to say is, is that at, up to this point, if you've got Doge coins, it's a lot like 2011 when uh, Bitcoins first were around. When, yes. when, when my wife said, when Roger Veer said, Mark. Looks like you're going to be taking bit- bitcoins for your uh, advertising for memory dealers back in 2011, and uh, I said okay, and I ran this by Ian and and my wife. Uh, my wife Laura says, "What can you buy with it?" Well, there's some knickknacks, uh, some chickens that lay blue eggs, and alpaca socks, <laughs> and that was what you could buy with bitcoins back then, and now. Uh, you know, she's she's going to these websites that sell gift cards, and she's buying the cards that we buy, you know, our gasoline with. And uh, Gift is now doing uh, Walmart cards, mm-hmm. and you know, pretty much most of the shopping she has to do that isn't at a mom and pop place, she's doing with bitcoins. But Chad, you made it sound like you really are a believer in Doge. Are you just pulling uh, pulling our leg? Do you, or do you really think that Dogecoin has the uh, the chance to be a real competitor in the international currency marketplace? I don't. I believe it does. I I, I have two two mining sets, and I and I have uh, I, I'm directed on Bitcoin and Dogecoin, and those are the only two. So you have a mining uh, set yeah, for yeah. Bitcoin. Yes. Okay. Not and what is it you like cool. about Dogecoin better than Bitcoin? Uh, it, 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 it's fun. Okay. You know? I, I get it, and man. I, I <laughs> we, we, look, we could use we could use rubber balloons as currency, but we don't. Yeah. That would be fun, yeah, right? I, well, come on. Right. If you could take your dollar bills and blow them into uh, interesting uh, circus animals, that would be fun. <laughs> well, I don't think you yeah. don't really think that it's going to surpass Bitcoin, do you? No, 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 no. I, I don't think. I right, don't Mark, think. You know. Okay. I don't I'm think saying, come on, because Bitcoin. because it seems like Dogecoin is like Bitcoin, but more fun, um, and with not as is not as popular. It doesn't get as many uh, shout outs in the news and whatnot. But obviously, no one is like water balloons. Don't have the same sort of uh, fundamentals as these other crypto. It's not meant to be a cryptocurrency. The way in which it's scarce is different than what a currency would do. You could always start Balloon Coin Alley and uh, copy over the Balloon Bitcoin. Coin. <laughs> start your it's own. And have a balloon NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Chad, for your call. Any other uh, thoughts you want to share tonight? No, thanks, guys. Appreciate hearing from you. And you know what? I, I get the feeling that a lot of the Dogecoin supporters, you know, it's it's tongue in cheek, it's fun, and they don't they don't really believe it, but. It's just part of the kind of the meme is putting it out there. I love. I, I think that they're they're just about as sort of like screw you guys. 
You know, just, just screw yeah. you. You know, and if that's kind of what it's about. And it, it, okay. <laughs> I mean, it is it is fun to watch. So, you know, what is the next spec? Uh, what is the next kind of thing that they will throw out there uh, to point to, like this Dogecoin NASCAR? Uh, you know, what's the next thing going to be? Free talk live. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. We will take your calls about anything. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Skype us. Uh, Skype username is lrn.fm. 
And one of the things that's great about Bitcoin is you can buy all kinds of neat things with it. Not, you know, it it's not just NASCAR sponsorships. Uh, Bitcoin's all over the place. And ProXPN is one of the myriad of companies that has decided to accept Bitcoin. We talk a lot about ProXPN and how they are a virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that whatever it is you're doing, the websites you're visiting, the, the search information you're entering, it's no longer going to be uh, recorded by your internet service provider as soon as you start using ProXPN. And ProXPN has software you can download for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, and Android devices. There's also a set of instructions for Linux users. You can email ProXPN's tech support, and they'll send that over to you if you're a Linux user. Uh, but this is a great way to protect yourself from snooping by your internet service provider, or maybe snooping by the coffee shop administrator that you're sitting at, tip-tapping away on your keyboard. Or maybe somebody's trying to intercept your Wi-Fi packets and uh, decode your credit card information from that. If you've got ProXPN, Everything you're sending over your Wi-Fi connection on your laptop is encrypted, so nobody can sniff out the, that information anymore. So ProXPN, very, very valuable service. You can get it at 20% off the cash price by using our code FTL20. That gives you the pr uh, access to their premium account. There's a free account you can go there right now and try out. Uh, but you, you know, use code FTL20, get 20% off for the lifetime of your account at ProXPN. But if you pay with Bitcoin... You save 33%. Now, you do have to get the annual plan when you pay with Bitcoin, but when you do that, you'll save even more. So with the with the code that we give you, FTL20, that breaks the price of the annual plan down to about 5 bucks a month. You take that down even further with paying with Bitcoin at ProXPN. Now, the, the free account that you talked about actually is sort of throttled in the size that you can do, too. That's so right. You, there's you, limited bandwidth. You that. can sort of try it out and see, but if you find that there's, you know, there's it's laggy or whatever, well, it's not a surprise. It's free. You get what you pay for. Uh, and in the case of uh, when you actually pay for Pro XPN, you upgrade to their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. You also get to select your server. There's different servers around the world. If you're going to do private torrenting, which you cannot do with their free account, <laughs> but you can with the premium account, select the Netherlands server because that's where the greatest privacy protections are. ProXPN.com slash FTL. You've got nothing to lose except your privacy because they've got a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Promo code FTL20. As we go to Brent, he's in New York. Brent, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ali, and Mark. Hello. How hey, are you guys Brent. doing? Great. What's on your mind tonight? Oh, well, real quick, I just wanted to say thank you to Ian and Mark. Uh, you guys have convinced me. I've been listening to your show over the last couple of weeks through podcast, and you guys have convinced me to come to Porkfest, so I'm going to try to make it this year. Excellent. Wow, fantastic. I also heard that Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends has been convinced. So there's all kinds of newbies coming this year, which is always exciting. Yeah, it's very cool, very cool. What was um, it that was most persuasive to you? Because, I mean, we've been talking about the Porcupine Freedom Festival, the yearly gathering of libertarian types in the woods of northern New Hampshire for quite a while on Free Talk Live. So was there one particular thing, or was it just it finally stuck? What was it? Uh, well, uh, the whole Free Keen uh, thing you guys have going on, uh, the fact that you and Mark have been putting out this show for, I don't know, what, six years, seven years now? Mm, More like a decade. Twelve. <laughs> uh, but your dedication to it and just listening to you guys, uh, I've been doing a lot of the podcasts at, at work, so. Awesome. It, uh, Excellent. Now, it into me. are you considering making a move to New Hampshire as part of the free state Just project? let him, just let him go to the pork fest, Ian. <laughs> oh, no, no, I definitely will be uh, joining the free state project. It's Fantastic. just a matter of when uh, my daughter's 13 years old and I don't know if she'll be coming or not or, or my wife. So I will be, it may just take me six years. Understood. Well, I'll tell you what, right now over at freestateproject.org, if you sign up, odds are good we're probably not going to hit that 20,000 number by the end of this year. And then once the Free State Project reaches 20,000 participants, there's a five-year window of time in which all the participants have to make the move. And it's not like somebody's going to sue you if you move six years after the five-year window. So, I mean, if you if you feel like the Free State Project is a good idea and you feel like you are personally on board and that at some point... You know, within the next decade, you're going to come up here. I would say you should you should go ahead and sign the the statement of intent because that'll get us one more person closer to reaching that twenty thousand number. Right, very good point, Ian, and that's why you are so great on the show. Well, thank you, Brent. Uh, go ahead with the, any other thoughts you want to share tonight. I just wanted to shout out. Uh, I'm, little, I'm learning about Bitcoin through through you guys, but uh, the best thing I've heard about Bitcoin is the fact that the IRS wants to tax it. 
<laughs> and why is that a good thing? The whole fact, or the, excuse me, the whole point about that is they're thieves. So when thieves decide they want to steal something, that means that something they want has value. So that's, that's a good point. Uh, but the best validation I can think of that Bitcoin now has official value and always will because they want to steal it. Thank you, Brent, for your call tonight. We'll look forward to seeing you this summer at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, the 11th annual at uh, porkfest.com. Again, thanks for calling in. P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com is where you can go to learn more about the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I'm so excited. Uh, it's always an exciting event, and uh, things are going to be a little bit different this year. Uh, the Big Gay Dance Party is going to a nighttime event. Oh, that's perfect. I've always thought it would be better at night. Yep, so that's going to be a big change. And uh, and as I mentioned, I'm, I'm excited that we're going to finally get to meet Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. He's He's got his uh, plane tickets booked, and he's going to be coming out. Uh, to the Porcupine Freedom Festival with his wife Deborah, so it'll be. Uh, it's always great at the Porcupine Freedom Festival because there's always a bunch of new people there. The majority of people every year at Porkfest are brand new. They're people who've never been to New Hampshire. They've never, you know, really come to any kind of Free State Project related event before. It's their first time, and they're around literally hundreds of other people who get what freedom's all about. There's nothing like. The Porcupine Freedom Festival. Sure, libertarians get together and they have conventions and parties and things like that, but there's nothing like the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Go to porkfest.com to learn more. Let's go to Liberty Phoenix on Skype. You're on Free Talk Live, Liberty Phoenix. Hey guys, um, I just wanted to make a little comment to the uh, to whether or not uh, bit libertarians have lost the soul of Bitcoin. Sure, I don't think that it ever was a libertarian thing. I mean. It, we don't. Bitcoin doesn't require people to be libertarian for it to be a success. Nope, that's true. It, in, in and of itself, thank is, goodness, or else it wouldn't work. So, and I don't know what libertarian means, but to me, I was convinced slowly over time to the ideas of liberty because they were the most moral, right, just, and honest ideas that I could find, and you know, currency should only be a store of value. Fiat currencies as they exist today, the major competition for Bitcoin, are largely not stores of value because the people that control them can print, can create more uh, currency as, as time goes by, whenever they feel like it. So Bitcoin is, it's not libertarian, it's simply honest. And libertarians have been moral and honest about their conversations around currency. So I don't know if it's libertarian, it's just that libertarians have had the right ideas around currency, in my opinion. Right, Mark. And then I... To those people who say that you know it's libertarian because it challenges the central banking, I mean, that's not necessarily the intent of it. That's just an awesome side effect. Well, do you remember when, I'm sure everyone does, when it came to the issue of currency, libertarians used to be the ones that always just go to gold and silver. That was like our thing that we always said, well, mm -hmm. that's the alternative. And I didn't really have anything else in mind. Yeah. And then when Bitcoin came along, I felt a little like defensive. Like, what about my gold and silver? That's, I did too. That's the alternative. I what still is do. This Bitcoin? Uh, well, uh, look, I still do. And I'm keeping my gold and silver. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am too. No, no, no. <laughs> am I getting getting rid of the gold and silver I had? But those that was just a little bit of something that I had sort of stored up. And I'm getting more uh, when I want to cash out of Bitcoins. I'm cashing out, uh, you know, in gold. Um, um, in many and other things of value, but the you know I mean that's uh, that's sort of beside the point. Gold and silver had four decades to become again the currency of choice for people, and it hadn't. But Bitcoin's got a lot of momentum. And people are really excited about it. So, I think it's you know. I think it's better because it makes sense for be for people to be trading in Bitcoins, whereas gold and silver are more of hoarding things. I think. We'll come back with more. Uh, Phoenix, if you had more you wanted to share, you can stand by. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Enough time for you if you call now. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping 
helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and the truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. Honey, look, I'm getting jerky with it. You're getting what? Getting jerky with it. I'm getting jerky at jerkyspot.com. They've got over 100 delicious jerkies to choose from, like crunchy maple bacon jerky, cranberry jalapeno, and even liquor-infused beef jerky. Go to jerkyspot.com today and save $5 on your first order. Use the code TRYJERKYSPOT. Jerkyspot.com. It's all your favorite jerky in one spot. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. So the toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Also, you may Skype us, as Liberty Phoenix has done. The Skype username is lrn.fm. You just send a contact request. We'll accept it, and you'll be good to go. If we get a chance, we'll tell you about some rich people welfare that Allie has brought in to share with us here. But uh, Phoenix, you're back on. Uh, before we get back to Phoenix, though, Mark, you wanted to mention how to get some gold and silver because that stuff still is valuable and it still does hold its value pretty darn well. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm i happy uh, about possessing gold and silver. Uh, I think a lot of uh, folks in the Liberty community are. Lots of people are wanting to have more gold and silver they're they're uncomfortable with the the world financial situation and they either want it as a hedge against inflation they want it in barter currency for a barter currency in case things go south they may want it for an investment because they believe gold and silver are poised to move upward and i agree that silver is definitely ready to move upward you can get 
your gold and help Free Talk Live in the process by going to gold.freetalklive.com. You can get gold or silver there, coins or uh, pieces made by other mints, um, whatever wow, it is you need. silver's below 20 bucks right now? Yeah. It's time, good to, get time to, to buy. It's a good time to buy. Yeah. Silver.freetalklive.com. Uh, Midas Resources. Page. Midas Resources, great company. They are behind the Genesis Communications Network. That's the company that helps syndicate Free Talk Live to get us on over 140 radio stations from coast to coast. So when you buy from silver.freetalklive.com or gold.freetalklive.com, you're helping keep Free Talk Live on the air. And you're dealing with a very professional company that always takes care, of, yeah, yeah. takes care of the problems. Uh, if there is if there is one, I've bought from them many, many, many times, and um, I'm going to do it again, happily. All right, let's go back to Liberty Phoenix, and uh, you're calling from Illinois. Go ahead. So the the... The issue was whether or not Bitcoin was libertarian. And I think that's the awesome part about libertarianism and, you know, free markets is that and being, you know, just freedom in general is that it doesn't really matter what works the best. You still have the option to use whatever's out there. I mean, I can still being an, an anarchist, I can still use dollars. I can still, if I choose to go pay my taxes that it, but you know, if the government wasn't there enforcing it, I would just have the opportunity and the choice to use something different. I can still keep my silver and I can still use it and I can buy more Shire silver or I can, you know, go get the uh, uh, the Cumby bars and use all that. Or if I want to, I can use Bitcoin. I don't have to use one or the other. I don't have to use it just because it's the best one. If there's something that has more utility at that certain moment, I can still use that. I, I have that freedom. That's what the whole concept is about. It's not about, is this thing more libertarian than is that? It's about, do I have the choice to make my own decision on whether or not I use it? Right. It's like, you know, I can be a libertarian and still love the way red, white, and blue look together. It doesn't, exactly. it doesn't mean that there's a certain set of preferences that go along with being a libertarian or that there's like libertarian yeah. clothes and libertarian money. It's a radical group of people that want to give you the choices to make in your life. Right. Crazy. Phoenix, any other thoughts you want to share? Have a great night, guys. Appreciate I'll see you hearing from you at 855 free. So, Ali, you brought something in, but your uh, iPad has uh, has died. died. I will uh, share some of this Thanks, Ian. from the New York Times called A Nation of Takers. Because there's plenty of welfare out there for rich people. This article surprised me because it's New York Times, which is sort of known for being like a liberal sort of publication. And then... You know, the I, it went a totally different. The author went a totally different direction than what I thought when I first read the By title. By the headline, yeah. yeah. So, uh, welfare subsidies for private planes. He's got five public welfare programs that are wasteful and turning us into a nation of takers. He says, number one, the United States offers three kinds of subsidies to tycoons with private jets. Accelerated tax write-offs, avoidance of personal taxes on the benefit by claiming that private aircraft are for security, and the use of air traffic control paid for by chumps flying commercial. As the leftists in the George W. Bush administration put it when they tried to unsuccessfully end this last boondoggle, quote, the family of four taking a budget vacation is subsidizing the CEOs flying on a corporate jet. I worry, he says, about those tycoons sponging off government. Won't our pampering damage their character? Won't they become addicted to the entitlement culture, demanding subsidies even for their yachts? <laughs> Oh, wait. Second, welfare subsidies for yachts. The mortgage interest deduction was meant to encourage a home-owning middle class, but it has been extended to provide subsidies for beach homes and even yachts. In the meantime, money was slashed last year from the public housing By the way, program. I think that a person, if they want to live on the water rather than living on the land, should have the mortgage interest deduction also. Well, If, I think if the, you're going to offer this. I think the idea is that a lot of these welfare programs... Um, which people think are like sticking it to the wealthy, or maybe they don't think that. Maybe they think it's uh, you know bolstering the lower classes so that we can all reach this middle ground. But I think that um, sort of what I took from this is that it's tempting when we talk about welfare to make it about how it makes p those in poverty dependent on the government. But I think. The real objective objection I have to government welfare is that it so much more often goes to the wealthy friends of the government. It sure does. And that's what the kind of welfare we should we should attack and 
you know, be against, I think, before government giving money to people who could actually use some extra money. And it goes, it's not just, the, um, it doesn't just go to the friends of the government, but often it goes through the, the friends of the government. So, for instance, let's build a park in the uh, poor section of town, and I'm going to let my son-in-law do the uh, contracting work to build the car park, <laughs> right. mm-hmm. you know, and we're going to pay him double. But look at how magnanimous I am. I'm We're building a park for poor people. Sure. Yeah, they, they don't focus on the, uh, the the welfare aspect for the corporations as often in the news. Uh, he goes on, third, welfare subsidies for hedge funds and private equity. He says the single most outrageous tax loophole in America is for carried interest, allowing people with the highest earnings to pay paltry taxes. They can magically reclassify their earned income as tax capital gains because that carries a lower tax rate. I don't know what not, I don't know mean. what that means either. I was hoping one of you guys could describe it, what that means. That yeah, I'm not a tax capital guy. Capital gains. Pay that stuff. I don't know what that is. Capital gains are money that you, uh, you know, you you get off of. Okay, so you buy a bar, uh, a, an ounce of gold, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you pay a thousand dollars for it. You sell an out that ounce of gold later when you need some money. It's now worth fifteen hundred dollars. You've had five hundred dollars in capital gains. And is that taxable? Yes. Okay. He's saying though, everything's that, taxable. He's saying the answer this, to your question is: Is that taxable? Is always yes. <laughs> he's saying that the uh, the loophole is that they reclassify their earned income as capital gains because that gives them a lower tax rate. Lower tax yes. rate. On, uh, okay. Fifteen percent. Fourth, welfare subsidies for America's. Big, so what he's saying is this is something that only the wealthy can take advantage of. Okay, right. Can. Uh, war, uh, fourth, welfare subsidies for America's biggest banks. The two big to fail banks in the United States borrow money u- unusually cheaply because of an implicit government promise to rescue them. Bloomberg View calculated la- calculated last year this amounts to a taxpayer subsidy of eighty three billion dollars to our ten biggest banks annually. And finally, fifth, large welfare subsidies for American corporations from cities, counties, and states. A bit more than a year ago, Louise Story of the New York Times tallied more than $80 billion a year in subsidies to companies, mostly as incentives to operate locally. And you'll see that sometimes where uh, certain governments will offer to waive a corporation's uh, tax so like right. if Walmart is going to come to town and they'll they'll go to town A versus town B and they'll see if town A will waive the property taxes for five years yeah. in order to entice them to open oh, the yeah. Walmart in their town. So, you know, you yeah. and I don't get that when we want to just move somewhere and buy a house. Yeah, Walmart is one of definitely the big beneficiaries of like a local welfare scheme sort of thing because all the towns want that extra sales tax revenue. And this is really a difficult situation because I'm, on one hand, I'm like, well, great. They don't have to pay property taxes for five years. I don't yeah. want anybody to have to pay property taxes sure. for stuff they don't want to pay property taxes for. I think you should pay for the goods and services that you use. So that's a great thing. At the, on the other hand, I'm like, well, that's completely unfair. Yeah, what um, about you? you? Know, if I want to open a little business in town and say, you know, well, um, you know, I propose the You're two. You're going to have to make up the difference. The two towns. Hey, I could move to either place. They're going to be like, hey, I'll tell you what. Here's a Hallmark card. Go pound sand in your butt. Yeah. I mean, they they could care less that I'm going to, uh, you, you know. The, you oh, mean nothing. To nothing. Right. Nothing. Yeah, when we talk about these issues, it's always like this weird, it's not clear where I want to stand on it. You know, when certain, like when it comes to how certain people are taxed more so or less so than others. Um, it's confusing I'm for taxes, me. Right? Because, so. yeah, I'm against taxation, but in in on the one hand, I could see how it's not, like I'm for a certain group getting off of paying taxes, but if you think about it, that's sort of like showing favoritism in a way. It sure is. And it, it's like punishing their... Com- their competition. But and then, the government's always going to favor the big corporations over you and I. It's true. So I guess, you know, it's just a kind of a, an interesting aspect to the role government plays in our lives and that they give all this money um, and welfare to these big, rich corporations. We'll link the full article over on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. You can link to those by going to news.freetalklive.com. Check out Ali's show, ALP at alpshow.com. And we'll continue with more Free Talk Live tomorrow night, freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. 
Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, March 31st, 2014. Radio VR News. The number of confirmed deaths from the Washington State mudslide is up to 21, while searchers are making some grim discoveries in the disaster area. Ed Donahue reports. Rain sent water levels so high it covered areas that already had been searched. Jason Bierman with Snohomish County Emergency Management says the rain is moving out. And that's actually good news for our crews in the field who've been working in extremely wet weather conditions. Governor Jay Inslee says crews are working to provide family members of the missing every opportunity to find a miracle. If we don't find that miracle, they're also looking for the knowledge of the fates of their loved ones. Some of the dogs used to search for victims are being given a break after long hours in the cold and rain. I'm Ed Donahue. Congress is gearing up for hearings on General Motors recalls. As correspondent Diane Kepley reports, the automaker may have rejected proposals to fix ignition switch problems in some of its cars nine years ago. GM talked about two separate fixes for an ignition switch problem in 2005, but never carried through on them. That comes from a memo released Sunday by a House subcommittee investigating the way the automaker handled not only the defect, but also a recall. More than two and a half million small cars were recalled in February because of the defects and more than a dozen deaths in crashes. Congress wants to know why the recall wasn't ordered sooner and why federal safety officials failed to investigate the problem. Tuesday, GM CEO Mary Barra is scheduled to testify at a House hearing. Diane Kepley, Washington. The Obama administration says it has found some common ground with Russia in the Ukraine